Welcome back to week two of the, the Vessel Esports High School League. Tiny, shiny, and Exil ready to break down our Valorant matches of the day. We're starting our week off, of course, with Valorant. Then Super Smash Bros. finishing on Rocket League. And we love this game yep. to go ahead and get us kicked off. We got to see the Metro Lena Conference starting last week mm -hmm. and the continuation of it today. Yeah, excited to uh, get into what we have today. I believe we have three games uh, for uh, you all this mm -hmm. afternoon, this evening, uh, which is going to be very exciting. We do have the lineup. Central Academy Tech versus Central Cabarrus is going to open it up for us today, going into Monroe, Sun Valley, and then Weddington and Central Cabarrus yeah. yet again. For most of the teams, as you can see from the records, it's going to be their first match of competition yeah. where they had a bye week. Maybe they weren't all able to make at the same time. This is going to be the first week of their, their competition. So we're going to kind of like revisit a lot of those themes that we talked about mm -hmm. uh, back in week number one, such as the team cohesion, how is your communication start? We're, yep. we're building this baseline, this kind of ground level for these teams to proceed to grow upon for the remainder of the season going forwards. And of course, to mention, this is what, $45,000 prize pool that these teams are looking for? Yeah, it's a pretty hefty sum. Uh, that is for sure something that I'm sure everyone wants to try to get their hands on in some way, shape, or form, right? I know I would definitely not complain if I played <laughs> Valorant in high school and got $45,000 uh, to, to my name, right? That would be huge, but nevertheless, we are here to cast it. And I'm very yes. excited to jump in to whatever we have coming up here with Central Cabarrus and uh, Central Tech, I believe. Yeah, Central oh, Academy teams. of Tech. So, yeah, yeah. excited. Start smack dab in the middle, and uh, it, the middle is kind of things where we get to st get sticky, which is I, I think a decent segue into our first map. Bind the map of teleporters maneuvering out, braining your opponents, yep. as we like to say. Rotations are the name of the game here today. Uh, th this map in particular, it can be very tricky to get a read on on where mm -hmm. your opponents are starting to go, and it really can come down to these major predictions and split second decisions. Yeah, and something with Bind specifically, right, we have those teleporters on both sides, like in that kind of mid area uh, towards that, I believe, A site on Bind. And then you also have that back teleporter that wraps around to the shower area off of kind of where that hookah area mm -hmm. is on the B site, uh, if you're looking from the attacking side. They make a lot of noise, so you do get to tell when that teleport yes. comes through and when your rotation has to come through. But if there's multiple people kind of hovering around that teleporter area, you can hear one TP and there could still be four people still on that site waiting for that rotation to come through. Exactly. And they can fake a lot of rotations, which is something that will be interesting to see come out here on this map. Yeah. This map does tend to play a lot slower than others for the exact reasons that you described. Teams are uh, kind of waiting to get a read on who is doing what and where. When you don't have any visual cues to go off of, like basically what I'm saying visual is you don't see like maybe a cipher trip wire mm -hmm. or a, a, a smoke of another team or a, another player, for example. Right. You need to like you need to be listening. Do you hear? a teleporter do you hear some footsteps over like in the sand area like there, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that you can use and you have to be at your full awareness right like that's what can separate these teams from winning an entire round and just straight up losing if you miss like the tiniest footstep like yeah. that can be the end yeah and and you can go like with these kind of like strafe like i guess like stutter steps right if you hold yeah. shift you kind of like walk and it creeps and like kind of mimics, not mimics, mm. mutes your does, kind of yes. footsteps, right? If you are walking slowly and you can kind of like tap it and like have a little bit more speed. <laughs> so the rotations can come in a little bit faster than you expect if they are kind of using that tactic of the kind of sneaky approach on uh, the walk here. We can see a pretty standard setup, right? Cypher over here on A. Stacked also with four, three other members mm -hmm. of their team. And then the sky all by their lonesome over by Hookah. Yeah. It will be Central Academy Tech on the defense first and Carboris on the attack. So what we're going to be looking for a lot here is using these smokes with particularly Clove, the newest agent, to join the Valorant lineup. Their smokes particularly, they take a while to come back up online. Yeah. So you're trying to use them as much, like to get as much value as possible, whether that's kind of to deny silence. But this is also what I'm talking about with the reads. Look where everybody on Carboris currently is trying to enter. Whereas the entirety of the tech team, Central Tech, is on a completely different site, Ben. 
Yeah, Texas Red will recognize that no one is over here towards this A site. Will rotate over, trying to get oh a little guy. bit of damage there onto Spooks, but he's able to scoot out of the way back into that shower position that she finds herself in now. But now the rotation from Central Tech yeah. coming through. Here. Texas Red trying to play in the CT connector area. <sighs> Just trying to play time, waiting for reinforcements to arrive up in heaven. They're going to get the spike on down, though. Spooks got the plant off, and it's more in, in kind of this back corner right now. The Sky Dog will help scout out the people that are hanging around in the lamps area. And look, they're just going to straight on go in. You have the splashes, blinding them out, takes a bit of chip damage, trying to send them in. But both get Better Kid and Tartagalicious were prepared for that sort of attack. They dodged the flash completely and are now stabilized in a 4v3 matchup. That spike is going to go down soon with only two players from Central Tech remaining. This is looking to be a great start from the Cabras offense. Yeah, Cool needs to Ooh. come up huge here. He's able to find one, checks the corner, but not able to get that flick fast enough. Tartagalicious getting up three kills wow. to open this attacking side for Cabras. Great opening, great first response, and now they have a nice bonus round to play off of to really get this economy swaying in their favor. Yeah, so you're, you're just coming into this with better weapons, you're going to have greater util just off of winning the rounds, planting the spikes, there's, and getting eliminations. Those are the things that are going to get you more credits to therefore buy greater guns. So on paper, Carver should win this round, right? Yeah. When you're going on in. I am curious on the approach because once again, it seems the strat of Central Tech has been to mostly stack onto one site and then have one person kind of investigate the other. But once again, mm -hmm. they predicted wrong. Yeah, over on this A setup yet again, we see Cool and Texas Red kind of rotating back over to this B site, but the push already coming through B long and through this hookah position. The smoke is down already from this brimstone, really doing a good job of denying entry uh, early on through this hookah area. We see Sky playing this back site behind this tube area here, just trying to play it slow, feel it out. Make sure you don't get picked off early here. A little bit of chip damage there onto the Ray's back of sight. And now the push coming through. Get, get better kid trying to get something done, but cool already in position. But hard and delicious. Wow. Finding two, possibly a third. Won't be able to get the last one. Cool able to seal the deal on that kill. Tartagalicious, though, got some work done. The problem is, though, the spike is on site. They don't know where Scargarcho is. Flipnox walks with their back in front of the Gecko player. And now it's just a 1v1. Promethe's aim might have greater health, greater weapons, and just shoots them straight through the wall. No sight needed. That's what we're talking about when it comes to these sound cues. You always need to have your senses on full blast. Yeah, and with that bonus round in favor of Cabarrus there, they're going to possibly go for another bonus round here. They're going to have some full shields, some light shields here and there. Just really trying to get this economy swaying heavily in their oh, favor. Oh, on the side oh, of Central Tech, however, we do see some Vandals and some Phantoms, a few Spectres coming through as well, but really oh, just trying to get momentum back in their favor, trying to pick up mm -hmm. this first round win and get try to even up a little bit of the economy here in this best of one. Yeah. So now this is where you already had the bonus round, which has been claimed by Cavarus. So Central Tech, they're switching up their strategy. They're no longer stacking on to one site. You now have a two and three split with the, all of this cipher defensive utility locking down B. And this is nice because it can almost act as another another player, really slows down any push, mm -hmm. allowing for rotations of presence. But now the sound cues have been initiated. We'll notice that we're going to see the Gecko player star start that rotate back on over, hearing that the players are on A. We haven't had any use of the teleporters just yet, which is perfectly fine. These teams, particularly on the attack, have been playing slow, waiting for a player to initiate. So far, it's been Promethazine, always the attackers, coming up with that primary elimination. Vagnaman just played into more. Star Gaucho is on a very aggressive angle. If anybody from Carvers were to push on up, that's where things get scary. They did try, but Cool MVP has it locked down. Central Tech do know how to defend these sites if they're actually on it. Unfortunately, they've just lost the luck of the draw the past two rounds, stacking yep. on the site that their opponents happen to be pushing. Yeah, and left. they got that early kill as well on to flip in showers. They recognize that they have this spike yep. in their favor. Now get better. Could trying to advance. Ooh, Was able to pick it up, move it a little bit further back now for the rest of Cavarus now to pick that one up. Sage now finding this rotation will opt not to use these TPs, trying to possibly rotate slowly. Now pushing in through left. this mid area. No one on oh, Central Tech looking through that angle. But like you said, only three seconds remain. Trying to just get guns back in their favor. The yeah. plant just a little bit too late. 
but kills nonetheless still coming across mm. the board. Texas Red able to find one on the back end, but a good round coming through from Central Tech. Yeah, Central Tech it finally, again, had the, this split. It, it's, a, it's a decent strategy to mm -hmm. want to try and like, okay, if they push one site where all five of us are, they're not going to win. But if they push the other site, we just have to play the retake and we're going to do it all together. Right. It's a genuine strategy. They just haven't been able to figure out the mechanics of that retake, especially because players such as Tartagalicious has been getting like two to three eliminations on average. So yeah. that's a very thing, scary thing to look at in a retake scenario. They're sticking with this 2-3 split and getting aggressive in the showers area, but they're soon going to know that their opponents aren't going to be on the A site. They're more towards B investigating the long, and that Cypher Utility spotted out that push, now forcing them to rotate through Hookah, which as we know, Ben, is incredibly risky to move through. Yeah, it's definitely difficult to move through this tight choke point. Nades from Raze and whatnot can really do a lot of damage in that tight corridor space, but like you said, the Cypher Util coming down already on this B site, able to spot out a lot of the movement coming through from Cabarrus. Now Flip trying Ooh. to get aggressive, but Star has the angle with the Bulldog, able to find one kill early on. 4v5 now for Cabarrus on this attacking side, still posturing around this B site, this B take, but good holds here and kind of patience from Central Tech. Two players still playing this over towards this A site, not over committing to this B, looking for this rotation. Now they will hear mm -hmm. the teleporters, and now rotations will come through from this B site. Cypher still going to hang around for just a little bit longer, just in case it was a fake. Left. But I love the play coming Very through smart. from Central Tech. Very smart. This is exactly what you need to do. On a map, just bind where teams can literally just move through their objective in a flash. This is how you need to play. And with less than 20 seconds on the board, Cabras, they get their plants down fast. Promethazine attempting to clear some of this space, but they're going to end up losing on the one. It's hard to delicious. Has the eliminations on board, but isn't going to be able to get the spike down. Has to find three kills in a matter of seconds, but you're not going to be able to do so. Central Tech identifying their own win condition and have now seemed to have their defense under lock, have this tempo understood to tie up the map at two apiece. Texas <gasps> Red and as well wow. on the end of that play, that push, that round, able to pick up the kill. But if you look at what's been going right for Central Tech, right? They've been playing this split approach on B and on A. They're not mm -hmm. heavily stacking one side of the map on this defensive side. You can see Cypher, with all the util that this agent has, really can hold a site by themselves and gain so much information by just playing safe in that back side of B towards that CT area. We see Star is going to continue to play with them, but now we see Central Tech as Ooh. well. Super Emo able to find a huge kill onto Sky. Sky v Sky. Central Tech wins that one out. Yeah. And now a rotation possibly coming through from Cabarrus. Now, losing out on the sky, you don't have nearly as much initiation power. You're using the sky for the flashes, the, the dog, to kind of scout out some of this area without the fear of losing your life for it. So with that being gone, you're essentially, you're going in blind, right? You have some of these curveballs that the Phoenix can throw out, but mm -hmm. uh, Flip Knox, let's be honest, those flashes aren't the strongest in the game. In fact, they're some of the weakest. And yeah. there's very little you can manage to get done on a save round here. You're just trying to get as many of these rifles away from Central mm -hmm. Tech to kind of break into this site. The defense really has it under lock. Notice that we're still not seeing the rotation with the Cypher player. It's been continuously Texas Red hanging behind, I, I just waiting for worst case scenario. And that's exactly what you need to do in these particular situations. It, it makes these pushes in so much harder. You can tell that they're struggling to move through without the utility of their Sky player and are having to adjust their gameplay as a result. Spooks had the wall up, manages to get the plant in place. You're gonna have to hold this on for another 40 seconds. Yeah, a kill coming through again Thrash. from this guy. Able to find three possible ace angle if Sky is able to push through and find these kills in this U-Haul area. Still full health, full shield to their name. The ult one still up remaining. and available. Texas Red will find one on Get Better Kid. Now it's just Tarta Galicious, but won't be able to find the kill. Another very strong defensive round coming through from Central Tech. Yeah. 
And that's them biding their time. They're covering their teammates on the defuse. Perfect. That's really all you had to do in that exact situation. And now Fear Central Tech, you now have that lead back three rounds in a row. And also the momentum in your favor. One of the big things that we kind of watch out for in teams of their first week is their ability to make adjustments, which yep. also it shows us how they're communicating, right? Central Tech have done that perfectly so mm -hmm. far. I now want to see the same thing from Cabris. Now that they're seeing that, all right, Central Tech have been splitting on the sites. We can try to push in the site for utility or into three players. Look at them themselves. You have two players looking down the A main area where the rest are either going big long or into mid. Yeah, another nice split approach coming through. Spike is hovering over towards this B site where Star and Texas Red are posted up. Wingman trying to get a little bit of okay. information. We'll be able to do so, but the nade coming through from Trip will find Flip on that backside. Texas Red again finding Jeez. yet another kill. The ult coming out will find any possible rotation and lo the, lo the location pretty much of any member on Cabarrus. That ult super, super strong when they are able to bring that one out. Three rounds in a row for Central Tech looking to try to make it four. Yeah. And as soon as that the you downloaded all the locations, right? Look how far up we're, we're seeing Central Tech start to push. I mean, Super Emo Goth Girl is literally in Cabarrus' spawn right now. Yeah. They're denying any space, potential of a rotation, but they know because Cabarrus are playing into this corridor. The teleport's right there. Like, you're looking right at it. If you wanted to make a quick swap from A, this is what you want to do. Central Tech are thinking ahead of any potential game plans, but at this point, 20 seconds left, you, you don't have time. You need to go and commit fully on a site B, and not, there couldn't have been a better pick to get. The Cypher is down. It's a decent trade so far. Okay, they managed to get the plant off, though. Star Groucho has used all of their utility and loses out on the one. Spooks, Spike laid down. Can she manage to fight? It. Not quite yet. They ran out of time. It's not going to end up happening despite all of the hard work that Tartaglish has put in. Yeah, a huge push coming through from Cabris, but it's just a hair too late. They were able the to find tomorrow. the kills, the ult as well. Exactly. You, I mean, that really sealed the deal, right? Cool with that uh, ultimate, that kind of tactical nuke that you're able to put into play here is really just pushing them off of that site, denying the plant, and then securing a round win. A single ultimate, like it, it denied the planet completely. That round could have gone f so much different had Cool MVP not pre prepared. And you could see how he was sitting in spawn and kind of observing. Like he had the ultimate lined up, he knew what yeah. had to happen. And, and it was just yeah. all Cabras playing into his hands unbeknowingly. So, uh, moving on forwards here. Something has to be stopped with the central tech momentum. We know how Bind can often be defensively favored if you have a read on where these pushes are, Ooh. or you just have incredible aim like that! Clean crosshair plate, one bullet to the dome. I, I mean, that's a huge pickup as well. That's one of the healers gone on the side of Cabra Sky. Still has a little bit of heal potential. Super Emo Goth Girl possibly going to peek through these showers again, but will decide against it. Just trying to play safe, trying to play time. A minute on the timer. The dog coming out as well. Get Better Kid able to find one. Onto the Brimstone, Cool will drop 4v4 now onto this A-site. Yeah, Get Better Kick and Tark to Galicious have been uh, the, the shining lights for Cabra so far, at least in terms of these opening eliminations that they've had. Especially with how New Clove can be, their, their character's whole design has to do with this aggressive sort of controller, providing cover for your team, but also following that up with this additional level of, of support aggressively. And you're going to need to see that right here, right now. The ultimate is back out. Tartagalicious has to get a kill, though, within the next 15 seconds in order to move through. Yeah, Texas Red has the set line. It's all up to get better, kid. Heard the spike start to get defused, but Texas Red, how do you even see that? I mean, there might have been like a sliver of space between that cage and that top of that box, but that was just eyes of a hawk, right? You're just able to Literally. see through that, able to recognize where this play, this contest is going to come through from Get Better Kid and able to seal the deal 10 and 3 on this Cypher, the ultimate up and available yet again in this first round. This is five rounds in a row for Central yeah. Tech. I'm convinced Texas Red has, I don't like 2020 visions, like you have great yeah. eyes, good yeah. for you. I don't know if there's something greater than that, but I, I think that's what this guy has. But also, if you'll notice on, on the Cypher, yes. the tripwires, the cages, the audio cues, all Cypher is is literally just an additional set of eyes, ears, yeah. 
there's been several uh, piercing no eliminations, like through different boxes because mm -hmm. of these sight lines. People are like, wait, where did he get you from? Lido, did you know you were getting stalked on a camera that right. was set up? So they're not even trying to push in this the Cypher utility, and I do not blame them. It is a very heavy risk to take, yet being within the smokes, you have a similar problem. Cliffrox once again gets off through the exact same green box that he got in before. Robethazine trying to make it up, will grab two before falling, clears the sight, Spike is down, but now we got a big old rocket about to join the Cardi Kaboom! Go Spooks! Trip able to find the kill with the ultimate now, contesting this U-Haul position. Cardi Galicious has the angle. Ooh. We'll be able to pick up the kill 2v2 now. The rotation coming through Star and Texas Red. The rocket as well. Ready and available for Get Ready Ooh. Kid. Will not be able to Look connect he has. on the kill. <laughs> Just barely unable to find Whoa. that kill. Texas Red has nothing left, but with the spike already down. Doesn't look like anything will come of it. Cardi oh. Galicious still holding this angle. Able to find one. Now 2v1 situation. Star has to come up big. Won't yep. be able to find the kills. Tartagalicious again with another three piece and an attacking win. We haven't seen that in five rounds. Able to bring it back five to three in favor of Central Tech. So necessary from Cabras right now. And they're taking that for, they're, they're not taking it for granted. They're taking a timeout now to talk about what really went well. I want to shout out two different things. One, Tartagalicious. Yeah. Beautiful. What, what was that? Like at least three three eliminations think, in just that so. round alone. Yep. Top fragging for the team has consistently been that leader, despite having two other duelists to really entry. As the team is very attack heavy. Yep. Second thing I want to shout out is the the raise player on their side. Get better, kid. Also had these shining moments, had mm -hmm. the raise rocket go through, and they played their time. They didn't get aggressive like their characters typically suggest them to right. do so. They allowed Central Tech to come to them, therefore eliminating further possibilities of surprise. And these off angles to give Cabras this round win. Yeah, I love the patience coming through from both sides, right? Central Tech as well. The adjustment after they went down 2-0 early on in this defensive side, recognizing that, hey, this Cypher can really hold this B site all mm -hmm. by themselves. Star with a little bit of reinforcements just in case it is a full push on to that B site. But really the adjustment coming through, avoiding this full stack on A or on B and having the split approach is really what was able to secure them five round wins in a row. Still looking good on the economy side. A few members still around that three digit mark, but nevertheless still with a healthy lead moving closer and closer to the half. But a full approach now on to this A site. Super Emo Goth Girl again. Target Galicious, the one to go down. That's not what you want to see on the side of Cabarrus. It's almost like a pick your poison. You can either walk into this devastating Cypher util, or you could opt to go into Super right Emo Goth Girl, who I'm pretty sure has not lost the a duel on the initiating pick ever. Like, yeah. you're, you're, you you got to pick your poison. And so far, it's not been great. Spooks has the resurrection available. Carboris has run it back. Even if they want to scout out at the back of the site, maybe even get an elimination off of it. This is the thing, though. You have all of your utility. I want to see them start to play it a little bit slower. The flip isn't going to have the op even the ch the chance to pull out the ultimate. And this is Central Tech starting to move up and take that space. You have the angling on it. And worst case scenario, you got your Cypher on B site if they decide to pull a rotate, which is looking less and less likely. Yes, yeah, Star and Trip just have these really aggressive angles into this A main area. Sa the Sage, get better kid as left. well. Spooks trying to find Star. something. Star with three in this round. The orb coming through as well, trying to find these kills is Spooks, but just unable to do so. The aggressive positioning from Trip coming up huge there mm -hmm. for Central Tech. I like that. Like, as soon as you know there aren't players in a certain area, deny that space. Don't let them take it back. Like, yeah. there's just fewer possibilities of them for to, to complete a reapproach, right? Mm -hmm. why, why would you want to be surprised? Do you like getting jump scared? I certainly don't. <laughs> so Central Tech, they're taking advantage of the utility they have and forcing Cabras over to a B site. They've only managed to get a plant down here once, yeah. and it ended almost immediately after. They're scared of what Red Texas can do. Yeah, uh, Texas Red already in that position, that Cypher against Star as well, playing in this area. Another kind of slow approach coming through from Cabarrus, just trying to get a little bit of information. These sound cues like we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. able to find or possibly hear Star moving closer towards this B long area, maybe Texas Red as well. 
the approach now coming through onto Hookah. Cabras trying to play mind oh. games with him. Ooh. Flip just barely unable to find that kill onto Texas Red. Able to seal the deal on that one with 51 health remaining. No rotation coming through from Central Tech just yet. I like to see that coming through. Playing patient a minute to go here for Cabras. Yeah. Turtigalicious, when holding on to her smokes, it's usually the clearest indicator that your opponents are committing to a full push on mm -hmm. the site. I would like to see them come out a little bit earlier, especially if you can, when you can get this refresh on that ability, then you don't have to worry about it. But I'm, I'm now studying the plan, come to light. As I say that, we're moving back towards the A site. Yeah. Texas Red scared them off, and yep. we're, we're back to the good old faithful 30 seconds and not a lot to pull through. That's a wonderful smoke, though. Spooks attempting the plant. You have the save wall in the way. Getting the plant is at the hard part. Is maintaining it. That's terrific. The two eliminations on their own. That was a blast pack through lamps on top of the wall. And now with only 14 seconds, it denied the plant completely. Get better kid has to take the risk, hoping at those covers there. But what do you know? Trip is above you on your head. What a performance from the duelist on the side of Central Tech for round number 10. Trip able to find three kills in that round. That nade as well, forcing Get Better Kid out of that little quarter, out of that U-Haul area, forcing them to move back towards this spike. And with that spike possession, right, they know that they need to try to find this plant with only around 15 seconds left on the timer there. And Trip recognizes it, drops down from that higher uh, position that they were holding. Mm -hmm. Waits patiently, waits for that spike to begin to get planted yet again, then blast packs right back up on top of that angle, finds the kill, and again, Central Tech two rounds in a row, seven to three now in this best of one. Sky trying to get these flashes going through the showers. We'll take the angle, the dog coming out as well, we'll find Golf Girl in that back site area where they often like to play. Oh but not committing just yet. Cabras possibly looking for a rotation towards this A main. They're going to get a move on. That was all of the Sky Util used within the span of five seconds, which is very good if you wanted to actually commit to a full push. Mm -hmm. But Cabras got a little bit scared. Understandably, knowing how many players traditionally like to hold on to that site and filtering through showers with everybody is very risky. So yeah. seeing this split makes me much happier. I hope they have good coverage on the spike, though. It's just Flip Knox kind of beating them through, had the running back into play. It doesn't matter. And this is where you start to book it over to Site B, hoping to overwhelm Texas Red before Central Tech can get an idea of what's happening. But again, through the wall, Tarta Delicious doesn't have a choice but to pull her ultimate out. Can she get anything amount from it, though? These trip wires are going insane right now. Yeah, I mean, Texas Red knows left. where everybody is right now. Possibly oh. able to find one. Yes, will do so. Tarta Delicious falling as well towards that back CT area. Texas Red again <laughs> with the kill. That's three kills on Texas Red. Make it possibly four. Not wow. able to get that kill just yet, but get better. Kid finding a few kills on this backside. Star and Super Emo Gothra will plant. fall, but One the plant, remaining. like you said, will not be able wow. to come through. Cool cleaning up the backside of that fight. That and this, this B site just half. seems completely locked down on the side of Central Tech. There's nobody that can tell me that Texas Red is not just running this lobby right now. Yeah. Like, there's there's just no way. One player has such a commanding presence over a single site just to go ahead and take it. That is ridiculous to me. Of course, now that I say that, he's on A with everybody else and is going to... They're going to swap it up for the 12th and final round of Cabarrus's attack here. You have all the weapons, the util. This is grounds where you just dump ultimates. You kind of hope for the best. I want to see it go quick though, just with how this works, but be Slide careful, because threat number two, Super Emo Golf Grill, now with an operator in hand. Ooh, you are playing with fire right now. Able to find two in that A main area. Texas Red as well, playing oh, yeah. towards this U-Haul. Super Emo Golf Grill getting the flash in towards that showers area. We see Get Better Kid trying to find those angles. Texas Red picking up a kill on the backside as well with the Odin, the spray through that hookah wall, picking up a kill. The TP coming through as well. Sky trying to find this back angle, this rotation over to B, but already in a 4v2 situation, looking dire, oh. trying to make this half an eight to four. 
And look at that. They know that the players are on their own. They're dividing and conquering those two players after get better kid and the rest of them were just on the Oh, well, at least he managed to grab one off of this, but holding down in a 1v3. It's gonna be a tall task to say the very least close to the Seekers if you can grab another elimination, but uh, being here, you have the sound cue going through the Cypher Cage. This is going to be a clean finish to the Central Tech defense. Nine and three, a score we see quite often within Valorant. Yeah, and, and an insane defending round right on the side of Central Tech. Texas Red, 14, oh, sorry, excuse me, 16 oh. and 4 <laughs> okay. on the defending side. This Cypher is something to be reckoned with right now. Cabarrus just unable to find the response. Swapping over now, however, onto this defending side. Will be interesting to see how they take these setups what they plan to do on this defensive side to really try to get this ball rolling yet again. We already see one of the tripwires set up in this flank position through this A main kind of area here on this map. Mm -hmm. Big thing here, though, is that Cypher Util, a lot yeah, less scary on happen. the attack, yeah. right? Unless you're deliberately walking into it or it's in a post plant situation. <laughs> the threat level of Red Texas has now decreased from an 11 to probably about an 8 or a 9, which is still very much up there. This guy's aim is incredible, but the Util isn't going to support it nearly as much. I am yep. curious to see this defense, though, from Cabarrus. You're down quite a bit. You have to find some way to come on back, and your only sentinel being a sage, uh, there's not a ton of defensive utilities. So you're banking on kind of the these duelists to get eliminations, but Texas run through the smoke, excuse me? Just, just game knowledge there, recognizing that someone's pipe playing that CT cute. area, able to just spray through that smoke. Find the kill as no well, shot. trip as well, <laughs> with the nade, able to find one on the backside. Wingman, getting a little bit of action waddle, waddle. there, trying to get some uh, <laughs> info back in favor of Central Tech. But right now, that was just a full-blown push wow. into that B site. There was nothing that Cabarrus could do about that one. No, no, no. It was all quiet, and then suddenly a storm erupted, lightning struck, and everything oh, went boom for the Cabarrus defense. Central Trick moving as quickly as they did, though, it, it, it breaks through. There's just not really a way to prepare for that. You set up a killer post plant where you are favored incredibly, and even getting a team ace for their the second pistol round of the game. I mean, this is a this is a team that is starting to fire on all cylinders. Even if there are some players that were a bit slow to the beginning, oh, they're in it now, Ben. I mean, yeah, look at Sumi, em, Super Emo Goth Girl as well on the side of Central Tech. 14 and 5. Wow. Texas Red and them just unstoppable so really? far right now. 10 to 3, the score line for this one. Central Tech looking strong, looking good. Looking over towards this A site. The flash coming out. Just gaining so much space through oh, this A main. Texas Red already pushing up to this U-Haul. Just trying to find these angles, find these picks. Just Cabarrus forced out of this A site. The biggest difference between these two teams' attacks is the speed at which they're taken. It's, it's often Cabarrus kind of waiting for an elimination to walk to them. Or there's a mistake out of their opponent where a central tech don't have a care in the world. They're like, all right, if you're not going to give us anything, we're going to force you to go ahead and make mistakes, get eliminations. And they get plants down without losing anybody on either side, though. So full star lineup, at least I say that, until this starts to come through. Trades back and forth, and now we are in a 2v2 in the matter of two seconds. Both players and Lamps, though, and Trip knows exactly where they're located. Grabs one, and it's all going to be up to Cool MVP. Has lineups on board. The spike is going to go kablooey, and Cabarrus right along with it. It was a great approach for them. They almost had this retake back down. Central Tech one point away from getting up to match. Yeah, and Cool there just playing patient towards that shower position that they were holding. Has the molly at the ready, able to use that one push uh, Cabarrus off of that possible defuse angle mm -hmm. and really, really well played, well executed there. We also saw, I believe it was Trip with the nade as well on Central Tech, able to push them back towards that U-Haul area, allowing for Texas Red to pick up right a few more kills on the backside of that fight. But right now, 11-3, to 3, a timeout coming through. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the timeout here is imperative for the defense. Being yep. down at eleven to three, and you, you, you have one one round of wiggle room. That's it. Otherwise, yep. you you need to win everything else. Your mm -hmm. game is just over. Cabarrus have yet to adjust to the defense. I don't think it's fair to make a judgment since it's just been the pistol in the bonus round. This is where things get real. Like, right? You have all of your actual weapons. You're gonna have this util to play off of, at least some of it. So. When you're on this defense, I want to see the setup. Knowing that Central Tech are going to push in fast, how are you going to counteract that? It seemed like in the previous round, it was kind of pull back, let them do what they want, expend their util, and fully invest on a retake, which honestly, it almost worked. I, I, if they try to do that again, I have faith. It is a risky play. You have mm -hmm. to have confidence in your duelists, or specifically in Tartagalicious, who has had one heck of a round on Clove, leading in terms of the eliminations at 15 and 13. B push now commencing Central Tech in sight of a match point. Central Tech also approaching Ooh, with there a you go. bonus round here as well. Get better can able to find a crucial pick on the Super Emo Goth Girl. One of the main carries. Promethazane able to find one as well on to Star. A good opening to this. Close to final round here from Cavarus. Oh, and it's all good. Okay, I told you the duelists have to step up. They need to take aggression. There's one way to fight fire, and it can be with fire itself. There we go, Cavarus. Way to get yourselves back on the tempo. Instead of just kind of trying to extinguish the flame, they're going to go ahead and roar back, giving Central Tech a case of the taste of their own medicine, and they, they weren't prepared for it at all. Complete change up in Cavarus' play style. Yeah, and that's just aggression from Cavarus, right? They know that Central Tech is trying to play fast onto these sites. They're like, you know what? Let's meet them halfway, right? Let's not let them come into us. Let's go to them. They are able to find the kills crucially early on okay. onto Super Emo Goth Girl. 14 and 7 now. The score line for this sky on the side of Central Tech. Another posturing again towards this B site. Mm -hmm. Nothing to come of it just yet. The dog possibly trying to spot out someone towards this hookah <gasps> sand area, but I don't think the they spotted anybody. anything They're rotating. out. The rotate is coming through. Cabarrus, a little tricked here. A good play coming through from Central Tech. They were just outside of Promethazane's dog sight line. I, like, that's literally all it took, and now the sight is essentially for free. The only one that's sitting on there is the sky, but it's a death sentence. Texas Red, who sits above, and now we'll have all of the information in the world, and he'll get better kid all lonely. At least grabs one before falling down themselves. Important round to take away Cabarrus, despite the disadvantage they are about to face. They still have their smokes, their flashes, their utility being dead silent. Silence on A, and they managed to use it in a way to overwhelm Central Tech. Yeah, Texas Red as well, having a lot of poke damage coming through, but that Sky, that heal, able to bring them back up to full HP. 4v3 now for Central Tech. Cabras needs to try to find this win if they are looking to try to stay alive. Mm. Super Emo Goth Girl able to find the kill onto Spooks coming out of that CT area. Tark to Galicious, Ooh. trying to find something to get something yep. back in favor of Cabras with Texas Red in Match position point. to capitalize. Brown, map point now for Central Tech. Yeah, map point, and I said before the Texas Red level, it may have decreased a little bit, but on these pose plants, when you get the utility up, unstoppable 21 and six, ridiculous from a single yeah. player, especially a Cypher, who's now playing on this attack situation. Central Tech, they can commit as much as they want, knowing that there's no way for their opponents to fall oh, by light nice. shield, forcing every bit of their economy to its tail end. So I'm going to have three players on B, knowing that's where Central Tech have preferred to go thus far. It's going to be, though, these rotations. They can't let the Sky Dog whiff this time. Get Bitter can't scout it out, but a Texas Red are barreling on through. Yeah, Texas Red just not afraid to take a gunfight. Running into Huga. All five members now stacked on towards this B site, but the rotation, the <gasps> fast rotation coming Debating through him. onto this A site. There was so much pressure put towards B that... All of Cabarrus rotated over now, they're recognizing, <laughs> oh, hang on, we left A completely unarmed and undefended. Wow. Texas Red with the cam will be able to spot people out coming through that CT area as well. Smokes into heaven, the plant coming down. What a rotation coming through from Central Tech. 
the Bind Mind Games. Out it's fun as did Texas Red at his peak. That's a second for him, making a third. Oh, Central Tech, they know they're so close. Give it to him. Texas Red almost as the ace in sight. It's only the Phoenix player sitting alone on heaven in Texas Red. He is hungry. He is ready to feast. Candy Five the elimination, the ace to seal the deal. The first win of the season for Central Tech. And what a way to end it off, right? Central Tech picking up the ace. Texas Red, I believe that's 26 and 6 in yeah. that first <laughs> round there for that wow. map, that best of one. What an opening coming through from Central Tech. That's exactly what we want to try to see from these teams. Yeah. Hey, they say everything's bigger and better in Texas. Well, there you go. <laughs> but Texas Red had, had the game of his life. And if this is how this team, Central Tech is going to continue to play, like, look at Texas Red. Let that guy lead you to victory. Bind is a map that they absolutely owned, largely due yep. to this Cypher player's influence on the gameplay today. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how that continues to evolve later in the game. Central Cabarrus, honestly, got a bit unlucky having to start on defense. Right. With, with you have, when you have a Cypher player that strong, like, you're hoping, like, please give us defense. Please give it a right. let's, let's go. <laughs> and in that situation, when you didn't, you're you're just and you have characters that aren't as strong in that. They didn't really have enough time on their own defense due to their struggles on attack to actually figure out a good response to this fast-paced push that we saw going in. Fighting yep. fire with fire worked for a little bit, but not long enough for Central Tech to rock with the day. Yeah, and also Texas Red, right? Amazing, but also super emo goth girl, right? Oh, yeah. Able to come up huge and clutch moments when Texas Red was down. They were able to pick up a lot of that slack and find those kills for mm -hmm. Central Tech. Really nice to see. We will be going to a short break real quick. We will be back with some more Valorant very shortly.
Welcome back, everybody. We are now going to jump in soon to our second match of the day. We have Monroe versus Sun Valley. We mm -hmm. just wrapped up Central Tech and Central Cabarrus. 13-4, the scoreline Central Tech able to come up huge with their first win of the season. Now, the second match, Monroe, Sun Valley. First uh, match between for these two teams yep. as well, just like the one before. Looking forward to seeing what happens with this matchup. We saw a lot of trickiness uh, come through from Central Tech uh, in this first match against Cabarrus, especially on this attacking side. They had bind uh, one map that is very good at finding these rotations yep. and finding these kind of tricky plays that you are able to do in a map like bind. Um, I believe we have today, it is Ascent for Monroe and Sun Valley. I believe so, So yeah. very excited to see how that one plays out. Yeah, Ascent is one of the most traditional maps, I guess you could say, uh, within the, the line of, of gameplay. This is interesting, though. I don't remember, no, if you remember, but Monroe, we casted their Rocket League team on yes. last Friday, and it appears that one of their Rocket League players is also on the roster for Valorant. We have a multi-talented gamer here. I love to see it because Cray, as well on the <laughs> Rocket League side, was <laughs> kind of really good. He dominated. Was I, I, very, I was flipping yeah. back through my notebook to look at the stats. <laughs> this guy scored seven, seven goals in, a, yeah. in the entirety of the series. Like, that's yep. like over two per game. That's crazy. Yep. If you could do the same thing here in Valorant, I'm going to be impressed. Four, like, four kills each round. Exactly. Four know, kills each round. You're getting an ace like every other Cray. Yep. We've set the expectations for it. I mean, in all seriousness. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I am very excited to see because let's, Rocket League Valorant, two very different games on, on yep. the surface level of things, especially when it comes to Ascent. We're straight in to this round number one already and I believe, so Monroe are on the defense, Sun Valley on the offense as they get started. Typical compositions, nothing too crazy to look at. The biggest substitute, though, is going to be the Clove instead of the Omen. Yeah, I, I like the Clove uh, over the Omen, right? I feel like that ultimate just has so much power, but when we think about it, right, I Omen has so much utility as well. A blind, a smoke, and that ultimate, that TP able to just Go wherever they so please, right, with that mm -hmm. ultimate ability. Now, we see the rotation coming through from Sun Valley trying to kind of fake a little bit of an A push. We see the Cypher already set up there on that A site, deterring them just a little bit, moving now through this mid area of Ascent, trying to move as a group. Spooks trying to find an angle through this area, playing uh -oh. tree. <laughs> Doesn't oh know no. this five people <laughs> looking at that doorway. The omen goes down, oh. and man, that was scary. There's no worse feeling than like walking around a corner and like, wait a minute, that's a few more people than I expected to see today. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. And Kray does manage to trade it out, being on the jet. I mean, this is your fragger, this is your duelist guy. So and it, it buys the team straight back into the fight. Does not prevent this plant, though. Number one, Zoomer, love that name. Imagine lay the spike down, the door is closed. So the biggest points to retake are either going to be in Tree or on Heaven, where off friend Faker currently investigating with the Sova drone. It didn't even get caught straight above the heads of some of the Monroe players, but clearly number one Zoomer wasn't watching where his head is located. Cray grabbing his second as well, and a third. Okay, well, so if we were in a question, is Cray just like the ultimate gamer? I think Cray is probably good at everything, honestly. <laughs> uh, he, Who is he, this guy? He can cook. He knows how to play sports, you know, and he fries in Rocket League and Valorant. Oh, I, my. I don't know. Multi-talent uh, coming through from Cray. 3-0, a three-piece in round number one in favor of the <laughs> defending side, Monroe. Looking good, looking strong to start things mm -hmm. off. Off-brand Faker and Sour Patch Father able to find a few kills of their own as well. But, yeah, I mean, Monroe just looking very strong on this defensive side right now. So I I might have lied. So all three players of the Monroe High Locker League team are also on this Valorant team. Spooks and Kev are on this Valorant roster. After so they've already played 
their their match last week, right? And now they're on a completely new game. I mean, this is the next level of, of craziness of talent that they're going after right now. And I, I love to see it, especially with, again, how different these two games are. I want to see how Sun Valley can approach again. Their idea of an attack was wonderful. They're making rotations, and hopefully we don't see the jump scare of what was Spooks <laughs> in the previous round. But oh no, the Marshall Crazes rips X to his heads off. What, you can't even do anything about that at all. That was a quick rotation through, and Spooks this time was like, all right, I can take the ones that I want to. Cray just grabs a casual second, maybe even a third headshot. I, I, who is this guy? I, who is this guy? I mean, Crate does get flashed. Kev now trying to get aggressive <laughs> the <bucky>. with the <laughs> Bucky. Able to find the kill. Breach versus oh, Breach. Man. Flash v. Flash trying to get the kills. But it's Cray again with another three kills to open up the round. 6-0 and oh now on this jet. One kill, one round away from having the knives unlocked. Yep. Jet is one of those agents, right, that can take over a game very oh that is so cool there's a what? mirror right there. i didn't know that was possible is that like a window or what how does that is that wait that is so cool i never knew that existed That's i think amazing. that looks awesome i yeah huh. i don't know i'm gonna be caught on that probably for the rest of the the know, map right? here yeah we, we get folks like oh shiny <laughs> <laughs> oh whoa, whoa what's that but no so this is this is gonna be a tricky approach. The, Cray is like the ultimate threat, right? So yeah. someone's got to deal with the jet, if you or at least avoid him. That's a great start, though. Grabbing Kev, the initiator off of that. There's less you tell to come back in, and then Cray. I'm sorry, you might be good, but you're not gonna beat four people out with vandals and a marshal. Is that that doesn't happen? Sun Valley now, you're you're able to go in five v three. Do not have to worry about Cray coming in and killing like four different people this time. Rotating over to A, not just tunnel visioned onto one site. Spike is down. Now they need to figure out where the rest of the defense. How is Monroe going to approach this retake? We're going to have spooks on this kind of high ground area where the KO wrapping around more in the tree direction. So with Killer Cookie hoping to catch some players off guard, hoping for they all kind of peek at the same time. So this way you're not staggering each other out. You can set off these, these nice angles of crossfire around this point. The smokes are slowly starting to wear off. You can push on in. The spike, though, you're not going to have a ton of room to go forward. So, yeah, that's about how we expected this to happen. Sun Valley had all of their angles covered by at least two people and are going to get their first round of the series. Yeah, Weather Shark there as well, playing in that hell position under that heaven. There, on this A site, that back area, you have that plank of wood. Whereas you can stay on top of it, that's called heaven. If you're underneath it in that kind of like hobbit hole looking area, that is called hell. Uh, Weather Shark able to pick up two kills off of that positioning there. Able to deny entry from Monroe from that heaven area. Sun Valley able to pick up the round, bringing it now within one Monroe, picking up the first two. But critically, Cray dropping early in that mid fight two off. Uh, uh oh. Off Faker there. But again, Cray Wait, with Cray the knives the activated. I don't think he must have. so. He must yes. have jumped through the wow. window. Yeah. There's Enemy no other mark. way he could have gotten that elimination. I looked away for like half a second at the map to kind of get an idea where people were. 100% missed that. And even just grabbing that trade off the bat, it's great. B site is a lot harder to retake, but also a lot harder to entry on, which seems that Sun Valley is starting to realize. They haven't had too much luck on B, so are hoping to force this attack. But uh-oh, if they go through med, do they know that there are three players currently waiting the KO ultimate, locking them out of all sorts of abilities? Whether Shark is debating whether this is the right choice or not to go on through, probably just blows them down even Further, I mean, look at the predictions from Monroe trying to anticipate Sun Valley's next move as much as possible. Yeah, Monroe, that KO just denying access to that mid area, slowing back the rotation, possibly forcing Sun Valley back over towards this B site. But now they're going to slowly approach through mid against Spooks, possibly spotting them out as well. Will fall back towards this tree area. Cassini trying to find a kill here on B as well. Off brand figure hanging around towards Log. They don't know that Log is occupied right Ooh, now. Off brand figure able to find one, here. finding the second okay. as well. The rotation coming through. The spike planted. now getting planted. That's it's all planted. up to this KO on this rotation. 1v4 wow. for Monroe. 
apps they got bamboozled. Uh, Monroe were trying so hard to to get in the heads of Sun Valley, but in reality, it wasn't them playing their own game. It was Sun Valley that was forcing Monroe into their own hands, closing out a fourth round here. They've gotten the spike down every single time on A, and it's looked wonderful each time it's happened. Yeah, Cray had two insanely unreal opening rounds, right? But in those last two, only able to find one pickup. The Knives able to find one, but not nothing else from the Jet just yet. The two okay. Marshals in hand now, Cray and Kev, piloting those ones. Full by shield for Cray. Light shield there for Kev as well. We're tied up to a piece. The Concuss possibly coming through for number one Zoomer here on to this B site. Cray oh, already Cray though able to find one kill off brand Faker going down early. 5v4 now on this push for Sun Valley. I'm starting to figure it out. Cray just, Cray just needs to stay alive. <laughs> like, the yeah. two rounds that Monroe have lost, it's because you, ha you haven't really had this this entry fragger mm -hmm. to kind of put you back in, right? If Cray can manage to just live and uh, try to force Sun Valley away, I think Monroe have a good good sense that, like, all right, Sun Valley have attempted to push me before, but every time it's been a rotation through this mid site, you still have two remaining on A. They have so much confidence in just Cray with the help of Gasani's Cypher utility to hold down the site on its own. Now Sun Valley are going into a choke point that they don't know is predicted. Cook, though, doesn't want to peek it. Doesn't really know how many players are in that vicinity. See the Decay ability thrown wide in, but Weather Shark will have the timing on them. Wonderful rotation, taking their time on the shot, and now searching for Craze Ed, playing a dangerous game, dancing in front of the opponents. And now Sun Valley may be attempting their very first push on to B. Yeah, 4v4 Cray, however, picking up the Vandal, able to find one. The ultimate popped as well. Clove coming back alive. Cassini able to find one on Exotify. But Sour Patch Father able to find the response. Spooks oh, oh. with. The Bucky as well, finding the kill. Spooks uh, now now with the Vandal, finding another. It's all up to the Cypher. Low health bars on the side. Monroe, oh, if they're able to find these kills, match. that's one. 81 now will find two. Wow. The four-piece coming through. Sun Valley winning the round. Wow, Sour Patch. Cypher, a character that typically doesn't get much value on the attack rounds, except for in these post plant situations. And that's exactly where Sour Patch Father came alive. Uh, that four eliminations in a 3v1 and still wins it out, despite Spooks starting to play out of his mind. Like, uh, Sun Valley are really have this they have this well-rounded roster that you can start to, you can rely on, you can trust in these clutch situations that are not easy to take at all. And now, that's three rounds in a row for Sun Valley. That early fire from Monroe has slowly been put out. Yeah, and on the side of Sun Valley as well, they have the download and the Hunter's Fury Shadows up travel. and available. If they're able to find the spike plant and off-brand faker stays alive, then this Sova ultimate could be huge in denying this post-plant retake coming through yeah. from Monroe. They have possession already of this A site, the plant coming through again, and now we already see off-brand Faker falling back towards that attacking side, that little cubby when you're looking to enter through that archway onto A. Number one Zoomer able to find Kray Ooh. as well, a huge pickup, Spooks finding Spooks? one, finding two! Sour Patch Father able to find the kill in return, but still, that Hunter's Fury still a huge threat when it comes to trying to retake this site. Weather Shark playing down and help, finding one, finding two, the third wow. as well. No one checking their corners on the side of Monroe, unable to find those kills. Sun Valley, four to two, the lead on this map. As soon as the sp Sun Valley spike goes down, it's like every player knows instantly where they're supposed to be. And it's regardless of where they're initially positioned, right? Like it doesn't matter if, if you have three players, if you have five players, if you have two players, like they, they know where to go. They're communicating with each other. And Sun Valley have been able to outrow, outmaneuver Monroe yep. in a lot of these scenarios. I think it's fair to say that Mar Monroe have superior mechanics, but the communication and teamwork from Sun Valley has managed to outmatch that in several of these rounds. And that's the beauty of a game like Valorant, right? It, yeah. At the end of the day, it is a team game, right? If you mm -hmm. have rotations that are just stellar and just team coordination with your pushes, it'll 
outweigh that of an individual player's skill, right? We see Cray and we see a timeout as well coming through from this Monroe side, sliding four rounds in a row over to Sun Valley, able to really kick it up into high gear. But that just goes to show the team cohesion and the team play that this squad is playing with right now. It's, it's incredible for Sun Valley. It's your fourth round now. Your economy is thriving, and you're heading into a save that Monroe just doesn't have a choice. And this is kind of the point where, where Valorant can get scary, is that you really only have a good shot of winning every other round because your economy is in such a pitiful state after yeah. losing several in a row. Sun Valley continue to exploit that advantage and uh, just, just move towards A, take as much space as possible they're not just shoving all players down one choke point. They're using their ability to cover greater ground, make sure no one's flanking through the mid angle, and further securing some of the most impressive post plant that we've had in this league so far. We already see Sun Valley approaching through a tree here. There's Spooks a going down, Exotify able to find that kill. Two players swing together. Kevin are playing down in this hell position. No one no. checking behind them. Number one zoomer goes down. If Kev is able to go crazy here, he might be able to find mm. the pickup. But Weather Shark able to find the kill instead. 4v3 now in favor of Sun Valley. The plant already down. And again, that Sova, the Hunter's Fury in position to deny a defuse. Uh, this is crazy. Sun Valley just don't lose these. You, you don't lose these. First time in a while, Cray has been alive in a post plant scenario. He could just go crazy again, but. Uh, that, that's a lot of pressure onto one player. They know where the KO is. Goodbye, that Cray. All the meanwhile, you just pushed off into four different players. Uh, Sun Valley, you're just, as soon as that spike goes down, they're not losing. I'm convinced. Uh, yeah, and this A push has been looking super strong from Sun Valley, right? They're able to find these entry kills and just use their utility to such great effect, pushing Monroe off of this A site, I back off of Heaven. And then once they have that tree control, there's Going really B. only Going one B. avenue that Monroe has to enter back into that site, and that is through right that here. heaven kind of position that you see Spooks in right now. Weather Shark, 9 and 4 on the side of Sun Valley. The ult up and available as well. So but a potential 6v5 here in favor of Sun Valley if yeah. that ult does get popped once if Weather Shark goes down. They are going to get the read at least on no B. Run, the Earthquake going through. Hunter's Fury, that's a really early ultimate from the Sova player. I'm quite shocked to see off-brand Faker kind of pull that out. I can understand with the general idea of positioning, but it's such a broad angle that it doesn't get nearly as much value as it could have in other situations. It does clear the way, though. For Sun Valley to start a rotate with her shark. That's where that 65 comes in, and it turned into a 5v4. Damage assist, though, from Weather Shark has to happen with either the elimination or damage assist has to be. Yeah, you gotta win one! And Gasani was right into their crosshair. Wonderful approach. I mean, Sun Valley, they're running down the exact same strategy every time. Like, okay, we're gonna attempt B, see if it works. If it doesn't, we walk straight through mid. We take A. After Monroe has already moved their way out, get this plant, and then they know they're on top. Yeah, and just the rotation and the ult usage, right, from Water or Weather Shark, excuse me, is is great, right? Cray finds the kill, goes yeah. down to the breach on the side of Sun Valley, and just stays alive. It's back into a four v five situation. Yeah. The Hunter's Fury a, a little bit confusing there for me, but I think the play really was that money. concuss came through on the side of Monroe and they just wanted to like, play wanted denial, to right? They wanted to make sure yeah. no one was pushing through that area on that B site and really just play time, stay alive, and then find that rotation back over to that A site, which they did beautifully. It's a fair attempt, right? Uh, you might as well go for it. it. It didn't work out at the end of the day. Hunter's Fury, it's a very touch-and-go ultimate with how that goes. Jet Niles, on the other hand, quite the opposite. Not only do you get, do you get to save your economy, but it's also incredible damage. You can be up in the air, and it's 100% accuracy. In Valorant, you typically have to stop moving altogether in order to get your shots to land where you want them to, and the yep. bullets don't go every other direction. Whereas the Jet Knives, you could just be sprinting across the map, shoot one all the meanwhile, and it's dead accurate. That's where that can get kind of scary. It is on the B site, though, and we see the 
movement over several ultimates about to come into play. More specifically, the Rolling Thunder knocking up players and stunning them. All the meanwhile, Kev will grab one off the back of it and give the rest of the team a minute for Monroe to approach. They don't know Spooks is there. Thankfully, moving out of the line of sight. And all Brad Faker has the Son of Valley's teammates backs covered. Great way to watch the six, giving the attackers that player advantage. Yeah, Spooks almost coming up with huge kills on the side of Monroe, but just getting timing there, trying to get that blind yet again. But Ocran Faker, like you said, able to find that kill on the backside. Cray as well, number one zoomer, able to find the kill. Killer Cook trying to find kills in response, but now it's a 1v3 situation. Ocran Faker with another three kills here. Seven to two, Sun Valley showing no signs of stopping. This guy might actually be Faker with how well he's been playing. Silva know, does. Right? <laughs> Silva does kind of own the map of Ascent. This this map was yep. the meta was notoriously created based on how strong Silva has been in the past, and he's still very good. But as such a high skill ceiling, it takes a lot of a lot of brain power mm -hmm. to be able to operate with how your sonic arrows move, you your dance. drone to clear out certain angles, and more importantly, knowing when to use your certain utility. That's kind of what I want to look for. You know, Kevin's there. He's not even going to bother to take the shot. Flash instead. Grab three players. That's one. Almost a second on board. Kev just throwing utility at the front of Sun Valley. He'll grab one more before he's finally punished. Yeah, a great individual play coming through from Kev. Playing through that B main area. Finding that flash. Finding those kills. Great as well. Able to pick Whoa. up two on the backside. It is a 1v4 now for Sun Valley. Exactify, Exotify, excuse me, <laughs> trying to bring this one back in favor of Sun Valley. But right now Monroe with a very strong attack Cray still hovering in this mid area. Spike Just here. going a little bit hunting. They have the spike in possession. Okay. Cray unable to find the kill, but Spooks on the flank will be able to clean that one up. Sun Valley though still with plenty of economy. They can lose a round yeah. or two until they are really back into that danger zone. Yeah, with, with a seven round win streak, you have all the money you could possibly yeah. want. Uh, you're, you're, you're fine, you're fine to go ahead with that. Monroe on the other hand, much, much needed with only two rounds to go in their own defense phase. Something had to go their way, get that momentum or specifically that economy back up online. You have Vandals across the board, even an Odin for Kev. Surely he doesn't try to do the same thing and will not is on the BA site this time around where Monroe prefer to push or was some Valley prefer to push, whereas Monroe are finally starting to get that pattern under lock. You're like, okay, Sun Valley really like to go for B first, then rotate for mid. Why don't we just aggress on the mid, forcing them to go A? Yeah, Spooks and Cray as well, kind of hovering over towards this mid area. Spooks hovering in this tree kind of position, trying to cut off any angles. The clove smoke coming through as well. The blind coming through, but no push coming through just yet. Right as I say, the off-brand faker has moved in towards this hell area. Check that corner, we'll oh. be able to find the kill. Kev goes down, the Odin off the board. The plant as well coming through from off Grand Faker. Spooks, a little bit of decay there from that clove, but nothing coming through just yet. Spooks still in possession of that tree area. But you can look at these cams. They know exactly where Monroe oh. is going to be coming from. Again, post plant situation, off brand Faker. What an angle of the shock dart. And they had all the info Black in the world. Now down up away, excuse me, Cray. This isn't over. Spray and Spooks, what is this? Sun Valley is the first time they're managing to break through this post plant. Seemingly unstoppable so far. We'll get the defuse. Couple seconds remaining and one more round to head off their defense. And it seems, Ben, that Monroe wants to start their attack off on a good note. Yeah, and Monroe, right? The Rocket League team showing up. No, showing yeah, that know, they can right? shoot straight with a car as well as shoot straight with <laughs> they a have gun. The best, they have the top three as right now. well. 14 and 8, <laughs> Cray Spooks, 9 and 9. He's got an op. The ult up and available, but yeah, Cray, this Jet, something we often see, Jet has this operator, finds one pick and then dashes back into cover to stay alive. But a a Zekin play, right? Yeah, see if yeah, Zekin yeah. can find these <laughs> kills here. Cray, a lot to live up to. That's a crazy comparison. <laughs> like one of the best players in Valorant history, and then 
Uh, Cray has, I mean, Cray's been popping off. There yeah. is absolutely no doubt. And to be as good in two of the games that your team's competing in, I mean, if there's an MVP award, give it to this guy's Opto! Oh, it's gonna go wide, and he's narrowly walking away with his life. Okay, yeah, get away from there. That's a couple vandals. Thankfully, didn't take enough chip damage. Is still on his feet, but it's a classic Sun Valley. Move their way through ramps. They go up lane, and it's absolutely no problem at all. The tree wide open for the taking. I mean, I say wide open, but the smokes kind of make it that way, or particularly the shock dart going off. We'll hear the flash, Monroe's big green flag. So, like, all right, they're going to go over towards A, keeping Cray in the mid area if there is any sort of rotate. But we know Sun Valley, we know what they like to do. A site is where it's at, A site is where we live. Can't stop clean to can't quite close the door, though. That's quite unfortunate. And they did get you lose. It. They did close the door. But at what cost? Spooks finally wrapped around, was sitting on that flank angle for a while. The smoke went down, and that's his third of the round. Weather Shark might be back up on their feet, but not for Spooks to claim another one. And now it's just off Brand Faker, locking it down on the sofa. Hunter's Fury, but it gave away his exact location. The Operator and the Shorty, an incredible duo to have, but not against a Vandal at a particular range. It'll be Monroe clutching it out, finishing their defense at five rounds. Yeah, and, and it looks dire, right? It looked like Sun Valley was about to Switching run sides. away with this game, but Monroe able to fight back, find a few rounds to almost even up the scoreline, right? Mm -hmm. Seven to five coming into this half is not insurmountable, right? No. It's very, very comebackable, right? Off over towards this attacking <laughs> side. Come back. I don't know if that's a word, but... I think it's okay. a new one. It can be, It can be a right? Ben word. It can be a... It, it, it's a me word, yeah. It's, it's a Ben yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll take it. I'll no, take yeah, it. Yeah, it's a good it's word. still comebackable <laughs> for Monroe, right? Sun Valley, though, on this defending side, something that Cypher does very, very yep. well at defending, able to just hold sites pretty much by their lonesome. Off-brand Faker will assist over towards this B hold, but a pretty yep. even spread defense coming out from Sun Valley. I think the difference here, though, is the info you're able to gather with a KO versus a Sova. Sun Valley, in particular Sour Patch here, has been amazing when it's come to the placement of the Shock Dart, the Sonic, whatever it might be, the Sova just delivers every bit. So Sun Valley, as a result, can take these faster rotations, the movements, and have a guise of where these players are pushing, popping through the smoke, whether Shark will stay alive. Can't say the same, though, for Exotify. Monroe making quick work of their attack. Sun Valley, they got a little scared as soon as those smokes went down. Like, all right, we're not going to take any risks. And now have to fight their way through a post plant with three players currently sitting below them. Yeah, three players playing through hell, but Kev. What? Oh my goodness. Able to find so. Two kills with one ability up towards heaven. Now it's just off Grand wow. Faker and number one Zoomer left alive for Sun Valley. Off Grand Faker possibly standing. picking up a kill. Not quite just yet. Spooks able to find oh, no. the one in response. Kev finding three, but the play from hell coming up huge for Monroe. Not only, so that was the aftershock that got the elimination, but you know why they didn't move out of the way? They got hit with an see. omen blind. Yeah. They can't see. They can't hear. They don't know they're in the range of that ability. So there was no reason for them to move. I mean, Kevin Spooks, they're on the Rocket League team together. They're putting themselves in the Valorant team, and their synergy is incredible. Monroe are stepping it up to use their utility to get its maximum value, particularly on a pistol round where we can further see the importance of such damaging or even hindering abilities, right? Yeah. Gives them that pistol round that it surely looked like they were going to lose. Yeah, and... Really just a great attack coming through from in a row. Seven to six now, still in favor of Sun Valley, but looking very, very strong from Monroe right now as they are hovering over towards this A push yet again. Zotify, the only one there to defend. Whoa. Kev will go down, not able to find that flick in time as they were dead set on closing that door. Kev loves that Bucky, man. <laughs> <laughs> he always just runs it down with the Bucky. I'm sorry, it's not as good as it used to be in, in back in olden days of Bucky that would have won taps. But right. um, 
We're not there anymore, thankfully, for anybody that uh, uses that weapon. Cray, though, grabbing one specifically on the Smokes player. Normally, that'd be a big deal if it wasn't Clove and you can't use your abilities from the Grave. So, yeah. and less, less firepower, still the same amount of uh, abilities, you could say. Yeah. Monroe, though, seemed to be at a bit of an impasse hanging in this middle area. I'm guessing they're looking for some sort of Sun Valley player to indicate whether they're rotating towards B or A, but uh, for now, it's just this this big old waiting game of uh, trying to force one opponent to make a mistake. KO Knife spotting out any lurkers. Won't catch them yet, but it's a massive stun. An extra fight, the door was closed. They're not gonna get the peek around. This breach you deal is insane, but unfortunately there's just no follow-up to deal with it. And Kray takes Zoom around in the end. Yeah, Kray will be able to <gasps> find the, the trade with Zotofy already the with bucket. shotgun in hand, finding two, three kills over to Exotify. Spook's able to find that last kill, uh -oh. but with one second left, no. can't quite find the plant. The Cypher Sour Patch Father able to push that one, recognizing that if the plant doesn't come through now, they lose the round. 8-6 now in favor of Sun Valley. That was close. That was real, real dang close there. If if we'd Sour Patch did not decide to push in that exact moment, that round would have ended differently. I'm yeah. pretty confident in it. And now take that win. Sun Valley in the lead even more. And, and winning on a, a thrifty round. It was a bonus. They still yep. had their pistols pulled out. If it wasn't for that good old Bucky, uh, Kev just likes to run it down. He's not just like, all right, okay, if Kev's <laughs> doing this, surely I can as well. Picks up three with the yeah. single shotgun. Absolutely ridiculous and sets up Monroe so, or excuse me, Sun Valley so well for this upcoming round 15. A slow approach onto this B site. The Cypher Cam in position. Sour Patch Father will be able to spot them out. Kev taking out the pistol, taking out the camera, the Ares in hand, checking the corners. Exactly what you are supposed to do. Monroe still approaching towards this B site very, very slowly, but the rotation already coming through. Cray not able to find the kill in mid. Exotify Ooh. able to find that one instead. Sour Patch Father just barely able to stay alive through that concuss. Now Spooks 53 HP. The blind coming through. Number one zoomer has such a great angle, knowing where Spooks <gasps> has to be. But Sour Patch Father able to find wow. the spray Zotify as well. Able to find Cassini on the backside right as well towards this mid angle. 2v5 now in favor of Sun Valley. Low health on Kev. The KO as well. 30 seconds Finding left. this rotation over towards A. Yeah. Killer Cook and Kev. Last two remaining today. Neither team has found much success pushing over onto B site. It's either yeah. been a mid to a mid to A or a B to mid to A or just that straight up A. Like that's how it works, but Flawless. that's not happening either. Exotify crouched down, shooting the toes under the door. I, I, I do want to shout out Exotify for a bit. He had a slow start. To, yeah. to the series, I think was bottom fracking uh, towards the beginning and coming up in these last two rounds. Like, what's that? Like, at ten Se limbs? Seven kills. Like I think they two, had two, three. Yeah. Yeah, the three piece last popping. round, then the four there. So it's big. Yeah, Exotify coming alive here for Sun Valley. Nine to six, the lead. Still not out of it is Monroe, but have a little bit of ground to cover if they're looking to try to get back into this one. Bucky again. Spoofs taken from their teammates' repertoire, pulling out the shotgun. I hope they don't peek mid with a Bucky. That would make me very sad. I would <laughs> love to see that. You would love to that see that. That would be awesome. Well, I don't, what do you think a Bucky's going to do down mid? Nothing. I guess? Yeah. Nothing. You just, you but just I think see it would suffer. be awesome to see. You, you want to yeah. see like just the aim game? like Aim game. Bucky versus Bucky down mid? Oh, I would love that. Range fight? You can't come closer than like 10 meters to the other person. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> I'd love that. Like when you push two magnets together, like that's what it should be. Oh, like. yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah, yeah. How they like push away sometimes exactly. or they have like the same negativity or, or like positivity or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not. I, hey, I know video games. I don't know science. Yeah, exactly. So. Video games often defy the laws of physics and science. That's true, so yeah. a little bit farther away, but what isn't is Exotify holding the exact same corner Run under tree. Sun Valley. We'll still have the numbers advantage and the outlaw though to kind of push in. This is this is a save round for Monroe, mind you. 
Yeah. They still have the Bucky Heat nonetheless. Weather Shark has remaining. the range advantage. They know it. So they're, like, they're, there's just no reason for Sun Valley to kind of play passive. It's Monroe who knows that that fight is done. So losing that round as quick as possible is going to be perfect for them. Sun oh, Valley oh, have showed us how good they are at identifying what their specific advantage is for a given round and then taking said advantage and utilizing it in the best parts of the map. We now see Monroe coming out with a full buy on the side there. Kev opting instead to go towards his Marshall. Dang, no more Bucky. Cray does have the knives available. We do see the tab and the scoreboard up uh, on your screen here, but you see a Get pistol. That's not going to be a pistol. That is most likely going to be the knives coming through from Cray. The ultimate is popped yep. from this jet. Something that we often see the jet not buy a gun when they know they are going to be using these knives instead. Bladestorm is one of the best ultimates, actually the best ultimate that you can use on in a war eco round because worst case scenario, you don't get a kill. Uh, best case scenario, you get a kill, then you pick up their gun should you need it. And Kev just takes the elimination anyway, so hey, free gun for Cray, woohoo. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah it, the Cypher Cam spots them out. It is a split A slash mid push and potentially clearing the way for a rotate should Monroe decide to do so. Weak smoke presence. Uh, in terms of this omen, so Spooks has to carefully select uh, the places that he would like to block Sun Valley's vision of, and they're playing slow. T typically in this game so far, it's kind of just a bum rush at each other, and whoever comes out with less damage wins. This time, they're playing it slow, but more tactical as the rounds have continued to evolve. Yeah, again, approaching through this tree area is Cray, trying to find the knife. Whoa! Won't be able to find the kill, down to 33 HP. Weather Shark able to stay alive, but Cray trying to get aggressive. Wow. Exotify able to find the kill, but Spooks as well on that entry into that site. Kev angle. just barely unable to get that scope in Five on just Tower Patch Father. One 12 HP eight. on the side of Weather Shark. The door coming down, locking them out of the site. Spooks now trying to find the kills, yep. won't be able to do so. Blasting through the door is Weather Shark and able to find the kill round win in favor of Sun Valley. Now, reaching 11 rounds to their name, this is where things start to get a little bit iffy. Sun Valley need one more to go up to Natch Point and force Monroe to a best-case scenario in, in overtime, and that's if they can manage to win six rounds directly after that. Yep. Great timing for a timeout. Monroe have to readjust their game plan. I think they were really banking on Cray, specifically with the Blade Storm, but yep. it's just so difficult when your enemies, like it's these short corners that you have to work with instead of kind of these longer areas where Cray has done amazing down mid like anytime yep. he's there he gets an elimination but when it comes to these these corners where we like to see these uh these little rats in the corners with shotguns <laughs> doesn't end so well for a player that's based on long range accuracy yeah and really cray with those knives unable to pick up the kill there is devastating because now that ultimate is off the board for at least a few rounds unless cray is able to pick up huge kills in these next two but they need to last the next two 11 to 6 two yeah. rounds away is sun valley from winning this map. Monroe here will be on, I believe, a little bit of a kind of save round here. So if they're able to pick up the kills and pick up the win in the save round, that could be the momentum swing that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. Sun Valley, know that they're close to their own victory. Even if they lose a round here, you still have plenty of economy to work with where if Monroe go down, this is all of their eggs being put into a single basket. It would mean an eco push for round, well, really, the match point round. So Monroe have taken the time, the timeout, to go ahead, evaluate their game plan, decide how to adjust, opting to put the majority of their sentinel utility as an attempt to filter Sun Valley in the direction of A, setting up X Ex Exotify as well as Weather Shark in these particular angles and hoping for this, this slower approach. Monroe wants to get their own idea to force a B push, yet limited utility on their side. All it takes is an elimination and a click of a button from somebody such as Sour Patch and all the locations are revealed there are down and 
Authority almost half of the time going away on this attack. You can tell that Monroe are really starting to get scared here in this point, and no better way to open up a round than with a little peek over the top of the Scoopers. Yeah, Scoops able to find one there. Possibly a oh. second off-brand figure able to find the kill with the Omen. However, oh. finding a second Five onto down. Cassini yeah. as well. But Cray on the backside, finding a kill onto Weathershark, onto left. number one Zero. But the one ult coming through remaining. from Weathershark Cray. will not get anything. Three kills to Cray. Exotify finding the response. But now it's a 1v2. They're rotating Ooh. into each other. Exotify Ooh. not able to find the kill. Kev able to find it with the Odin. That is exactly what Monroe wanted after yep. that timeout. You needed it. You needed it. Uh, it's like we just needed to take a little bit of a breather. You're getting kind of tense. You lose a couple rounds in a row. It's never a feel good, obviously. But the ability to get yourself back into your own game, back into this true form that you've been playing at, I mean, that's what separates some of our greatest competitors here. Spooks and Cray have kept Monroe alive in this upcoming round. They're going to have to do it several times over to force Sun Valley to actually start to play desperately. And Kev as well has his Getting ultimate ahead. available if they want to use it to really hard push one of these sites. It doesn't look like they're going to opt to do that just yet. We see Cray and Sour Patch playing through these mid angles. Excuse me, Grassini playing through mid with Cray here. Weather Shark down towards his hell position yet again. But the rotation already coming through from Monroe, opting to try to play towards this B site like they did last round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is interesting. There, I don't think there's been a successful plant. There's been one successful plant on B, and it was Sour Patch who managed to get a 4K. That yeah. was it. That's the only time we've seen a success on B happen. Every time it's been just elimination after elimination, and it's already looking like more eliminations. At least Killer Cook can still get back up on their feet for the sake of Monroe continuing their own series. And there he is, but straight back down again thanks to off-brand Faker. They're going to go attempt this B site. It's so difficult to do, but Cray is also stepping it up. That's another at least triple kill in these past two rounds alone. Yeah, Cray able to find these huge uh -oh. kills. Off-brand Faker good. getting aggressive, however, with this omen, able to find Kev. Spooks will go on the TP over towards his A site with Spike, will get the plant down. And now we see Cassini and Cray rotating back over towards his A site. 3v1 off brand Faker. The only one left standing for Sun Valley. But right now, it might look like you just go for the save. Save the rifle, save the vandal. You're up four rounds three after this one goes through. Mm -hmm. Not not too bad of a save from Sun Valley if they do opt to go towards this angle. Uh, it's, at this point, you don't really have time to defuse. Getting it wouldn't be terrible if Aubren Faker decided to go in. Right. Um, but ideally, if you can just take some of these bigger weapons away, there's an idea of where the sofa's posted up. So Monroe are just able to safely move themselves away from that spike explosion and not much concern lost. Sun Valley, though, they're starting to sweat it right now. You were if as close as you were to closing out this series as a whole to now be losing in the last two rounds, that's scary. The timeout has brought life back into Monroe, and Sun Valley are hoping a timeout of their own can do the same for their team. Yeah, they will opt towards this timeout. We saw Opera and Vega on the scoreline there was, I believe, 18 and 9 <laughs> in this map so far. It does have the Hunter's Fury up and available. Sour Patch also has that download, but Kev on the side of Monroe still has that ultimate up and available if they are mm -hmm. looking towards a hard push on one of these sites. You don't want to save it too long to wait for these dire situations. But right now, down three, 11 to eight in favor of Sun Valley, taking the timeout now, trying to get their bearings a little bit, losing a few rounds there in a row. Mm -hmm. Monroe looking good. Yeah, Monroe runs back to it. It's more specifically Cray. He, he, he quieted it down a little bit there, and it's not all to his own doing. It's also Sun Valley just kind of stepping up and being like, all right, Cray, you're not going to run our game anymore. Yeah. And, and Spooks has also kind of been doing the same thing if we're looking in terms of pop-off performances. I mean, look at that, 22-14, 21-15, insane from those particular players. 
as this starts to wind down, right? We've won a couple rounds in a That's row. Cray and Spooks have been the fraggers of the day where Kev, Killer Cook, Kasani are providing this additional support in terms of utility, some cover fire to go through. And that's where Monroe has stepped it up in terms of the team play and has helped him take these further rounds. Sun Valley, what have they talked about during the break? What are they gonna manage to change going through? They've sniffed out the attack happening on A. They know that's where everybody is and are going to pop the Hunter's Fury Spooks, 27 HP. It's gonna manage to snake away, but can't see the same for Killer Cook. Killer Cook does go down. Weather Truck as well, finding the kill onto A. Spooks with the Phantom. Huge right pickups here. on the side of Sun hey. Valley. Right Roll oh, Thunder still up and available. Oh, Will oh. be popped, but Exotify with the nade already popped, already thrown. Kev goes down. It's all up to Cray. Has to come up huge here. Cray can see the spike. Just, just with a couple players on top of it. And, and that's, you're asking for a lot in terms of a clutch. Sun Valley really pulled themselves together here on this attack. Kray does manage to grab one. We'll see if he can get any more through it. Sun Valley played smart. They tempered left. the aggression and straight up just did not let oh, yeah. Spooks define how the game was being played. I need I to stop talking it. because Kray just got three people. Surely he does not bring this back on his own right now. <laughs> Both of these players set up at a crossfire. If they peek at the same time, there's just no way for Kray to get a plant down, and he is not going to be the hero of the day. Almost, but Sun Valley. You can see this one rising over the hills point. with one more round needed to close out their first game of the season. I mean, props to Kray, right, to take that contest. Yeah. Picking up three very quickly towards the end of that round. I was like, oh, okay, hang on. Wait a minute here. <laughs> Maybe we find these kills. If Exotify goes down there and it's just Sour Patch and Cray left alive in a 1v1 situation, this goes that here. might go differently if they know where Sour Patch is getting uh, set up in. Sour Patch mm -hmm. now throwing out the cam, trying to spot out a B main push, but nothing getting shown just yet. Cray, however, with the operator in mid, looking to try to find a peek through market, but no one opting to take that one just yet. Number one Zoomer, the only one relatively in that area standing in market right now. <laughs> the jump peek able to find some information, hopefully the shot not getting taken from Cray. Good trigger discipline there coming through from the jet. A slow approach here coming yeah. from Monroe. Slow approaches are always, always risky in these later rounds. And I, I don't blame Monroe. You're on like the losing end of a match point. You want to play carefully and uh, do your best to not mess up. Get that makes sense, way. surely. But you're also giving yourself left as an opportunity to succeed. Cray, knives are out and sitting on top of a wall. If that flash didn't go through, I'm sure we saw the heads rolling on the ground. We still will, but not for the team that had the oh, ultimate God. Sun of Valley, or more specifically, off-brand Faker. That's two on the Odin. And look at this. It was a wraparound flank. They didn't even see him coming in the back line. Sun Valley, Monroe, they waited too long. Their defenses started to bleed through. And now it's only up to one guy. And that one guy is Spooks. No ultimate, no teleport. 18 seconds. Must go for the both of the eliminations. Yet it's Shower Patch Father. The final say at the end of the game. It'll be Sun Valley coming away with their match win. Yeah, and Monroe. Kept it close throughout that entire second half of that map, right? 13 to 8, the ending scoreline. Cray, towards the middle of that map, not able to find those crucial kills like they were able to early on in this map. Came online towards the end there, mm -hmm. but just unable to find those final kills. Spooks with 18 health remaining in that last round. A, a high, a tough ask, a huge ask for Spooks to come away with the clutch there. But nevertheless... Sun Valley does come up with a yeah. win. Props to both teams. Looked very, very good. That is only, yeah. I believe, the first games for both of these teams in, in Valorant. In Valorant. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we already saw that. three of these Monroe players over on that <laughs> Rocket League side looking very strong yeah. as well. So excited to see where this goes uh, for both of these teams. It is. And 
I, I think if we had to talk about it today, this is by far some of the, the greatest skill and some of the greatest for development that we've seen so far. And the mid-game changes, the fragability, identifying these various patterns. Like, mm -hmm. those, those are the foundations you build in your first week of competition. And then you proceed to build on that from there. That's the direction the teams will start to take as we move later into our season. But we still have one more game to go through in the Metro Lina League today. We are going to get Weddington back on from their week one matchup, facing off against Cabarrus Central, who played earlier in the day today. So don't go anywhere. We got our next match coming up in just a couple of minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. We have one more game of Valorant for you today. We have Weddington, who we saw mm -hmm. last week uh, have a showing. They did go, uh, fall early in that series. Zero won the record, but Central Cabarrus as well early on in today's broadcast. We saw them fall to Central Tech here. Now they face each other who will pick up their first win. Very excited to see what yep. happens here in week two for our last match of the day. Yeah. Weddington, Sky Patrol, Cabras, both searching for that first win, of course. And now that you've played your first match of the week, it's the first time we can start to get into this. Like, all right, we've taken, we played our match. We can yep. take a step back. What went well? What do we need to improve upon? Mm -hmm. Things we're changing here are going to be maps. I believe it was Weddington that played on Icebox and Cabra Essential that were just on Bind. So yep. now that's going to be back towards Ascent, I want to say. Yes, Pretty it sure, yes. Is Ascent. Super cool. So uh, we're also going to see some swap ups in the roster. It'll be Mazakin coming in this time. A new face from Central Cabralis. And I believe most of the players are similar. On Weddington, we get to see Wicked, a float relic, and Swampster again, where Tacho and uh, Jose B, I believe, are going to be new faces this week. Yeah, excited to see these new faces, right? Because yeah. we know that these are high school teams, right? So there are, of course, a lot of interest when it comes to playing certain games with certain friends. So being able to swap people around and giving experience to a bunch of different students and players is something that is really awesome and fun to see. We see as we lock in some of our agents, the KJ, Killjoy coming through, mm -hmm. a float relic taking the KO. Wicked on the jet. Jose B over on the Omen. Sova as well getting picked up here on Tacho. So excited to see what happens here. No Sova, however, on the side mm -hmm. of Central uh, Service. So very no. excited to see what happens there and what their game plan is without this Sova. Yeah, so they're not going to have nearly as much info gathering, right? But you're also, you still have this clove. Tarte Delicious, if you guys were here for our earlier series, she popped off. She absolutely dominated on the newest character uh, to the game, who is more of this, this first, like, this role hybrid, right? With controller yep. having the, the smokes, the ability to kind of take space, but also the uh, aggressive capabilities of a duelist, right? You have, like, your extra heal. Um, you have your literal the ultimate that brings you back to life after you yeah. die like right that on here. its own is already an insane combo mm -hmm. for this team you put that together with the jets the thing is you're playing a defensive competition this is two duelists almost three if you count tart delicious with two sentinels on the side where on the other hand weddington opt for the traditional ascent comp yeah the sova is something that we often see on Ascent, right? One of the maps that made Sova so Here. popular and really something that you want to see often is these Ascent lineups that you're able to do with these Sova darts uh, on these sites. We see Wicked getting a little low there towards Oops. the back of those box. Sorry, that was Flip. Wicked was the one shooting Wicked, the yeah. bullets instead, able to pick up that one kill early on in that round. A minute now remaining here. Still a slow approach coming through from Central Cabarrus, trying to get something going in their favor. Pierce, we're sticking with the theme today that A is the place to be. Uh, no, no party on, this, on the other site. So uh, we head over towards A. If I'm Central Cabarrus, though, and if I could see the where Weddington is, it's better that now we see their movement away from heaven. Do, do mm -hmm. Weddington know they're there? Yeah, okay, they're just positioning away from the high ground, more having left. greater presence over on the left side of this map, over tree area, and Joseph Lee, okay, we'll get the kill early on, you had the dash in, you take the trades either direction, spite plant One attempting to come in, but it's cancelled midway through, okay. leaving only the clove, and there's only so much that one player can accomplish in that matchup, so Weddington are going to take advantage of the slower approach and have all of their cards nope, together for the action. Push in. Yeah, Wick so able to pick up three kills in that opening round. Something that we saw from Cray in our last match that we just saw, picking up three kills early on on this jet. Hoping to keep up the momentum. Swampster finding these KJ setups, these placements, these alarm bots, swarm bots, turrets, everything that KJ has to offer. Getting placed here on this B site. Now we see Central Cabarrus. Hovering over this B main push, potentially. 
approaching very, very slowly, mm -hmm. but Wicked already in position with the Spectre on this bonus round, hoping to pick up yep. a few kills here on this approach. Will jump, peek it. Will recognize that, yes, there are oh, people please don't, coming please don't through do it again. this B main, but don't, yeah, exactly like you said, don't we saw earlier. The shorty. <laughs> the shorty coming through. Get better, kid, on the jet. Wicked playing very aggressive here on this smoke with this here. Spectre, but Ooh. no one pushing Wait him just minute. yet. Okay. Wick able to find one on to get better kid to spray through the smoke, connecting fully onto the opposing jet. A float relic, however, will go on this flank. The suppress Whoa. coming through the knife will find three. But the spray Whoa. coming through the flash as well. Wicked, that is the go button to push in as well. Everyone in this B main, no one falling. Well, one falling on the side of Wellington, but a great hold coming through on that second defending round. Two big points that I want to bring up there. Number one, watch your backs. The yeah. closer that you are playing together, the more likely, th there's less space that you cover, right? So you, you don't have vision. You don't have information of other parts of the map. And Weddington took advantage of that. More specifically, it was a float who comes around the flank, grabs two, your jet's free to entry because they're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? That's scary. Number two, the reason that teams do not push on site speed, even though like I make fun of it, like A is a lot more fun. Yes. Right. But Sentinel utility just gets so much more value on, yeah. on B, like this Killjoy turret. I'm like KJ one trick, and I hold down <laughs> that exact spot, hoping for somebody to come my way, because I know how much damage and information that that utility can gather on its own, and is likely to get an elimination, or Flipnox can walk straight into a Floats Crosshairs. That's a, that's another firm, firm go button for that. They, and also look at where the players are kind of positioning themselves. Weddington aren't giving up free space. They're not in the back of sights, with the exception of KJ, but that makes sense. They're just denying angles all together. If you're gonna do that, you do have to win the ones. Get better kid will walk away with five HP to spare, whereas a full relic is now post back up in duty with this mid angle. For a second, I thought you were saying get better kid to wicked. Who just whoa. lost, and I was like, whoa, that's crazy, but I'm I forgot happy. that it was... <gasps> no, the no, turret got him! He walked up to Site B, and they're right in the line of the turret! Oh. And this is the benefit of having a Killjoy, right? You don't <laughs> even have to be on site for there to be a kill in your favor. Oh, KJ no. now opting to play towards these boxes directly on site. Has the angle on to part a yep. Galicious, yep. but the ult coming through as well. Swaps are able to find two. Now it's a 1v2 situation. The ult does get the kill. They will be able to stay alive now. Joe's be the only one left standing. The Omen now looping around, but Tartagalicious does have the read. Will opt to now look back over towards <gasps> these stairs. They know. do not know. Ten seconds left. Oh. Omen. Joe's does now recognize it, but now with the seconds ticking away, Joe's knows that they need to be on the site, <gasps> but doesn't hit any of the shots. Tartagalicious is able to clutch up for what? some recovery. What just happened? That's 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 a Spectre RNG moment at Rage 12 HP. Tartagalicious had to spare. She had no idea where Josephine was located. And that's all it took. A single tap to the dome with the Phantom. Oh, her aim is impeccable. And it doesn't stop. I mean, she's been this primary fragger for Central Carborus since their first match at the earlier in the day today. And she's going to continue with that role. Has the same amount of elims as the rest of her team combined right now. Yeah, uh, what a play coming through right from Tartagalicious. <gasps> Wicked yeah. now finding the early kill in this round. The Vandal straight to the dome now. The drone coming out, spotting that a remote will Wicked finding another one on to get better, kid. The ice orb does come out from the stage there on the side of Central Cavarus, but unable to do anything. Just trying to slow down any aggressive push that could have come through from Weddington. The rotation now coming over, over two towards this B site, but this omen already. Josby in position. Flip does try to check that corner, but possibly does not find the angle just yet. The uh -oh. shot does miss. Josby goes down. Flip finding I one on exactly Tacho as well. Swampster and Wicked now rotating back over to try to support their teammate. Swampster now opting to play back of this B site. Wicked. Oh no. They're going to try to walk through lane, aren't they? You can see on your screen that there's some little icons on, on that little lane standing. that you have to approach to. Yeah. Uh, there's a Killjoy bot. There's two nano swarms. All it takes is a push of a button. And I'm telling you, it works every time! Swampster gets two! Off of that and finishing it with a third! You do not push B-side if there's a KJ 
on there. I, I don't know what to say. Swampster knows exactly how to get the maximum value out of their utility. Uh, yeah, and Killjoy just set up a kill alley, right? Yeah. No one mm -hmm. is able to Nobody enter through that B site angle there. And then Swampster as well towards the backside picks up two with the abilities, but then winning the gunfight as well, sealing the deal deal in round number four for Weddington. The defense looking super strong, wicked, especially seven and two. The knives are already, but opting not to use them just yet. The Vandal in hand. Central Cavarus looking over towards his A side, but KJ has now swapped sites and has now set up yeah. on A. Yeah, it's not fun to push into KJ utility. It's a lot more repressive on the B site, but still does a ton here on A. And it's likely off of anticipation, knowing that Central Cabras have attempted to break through B two times and get shut down just by abilities alone. Like, okay, Cage is just weaker on A. Surely Swampster doesn't try to sit up here. Little though they know this little sneaky KJ is exactly where you don't expect him to be. They have to do their best to get away in. The issue with not, ha like the smoke placement, kind of blocks the sight lines for them as well. There's not much place to really go forward. Start delicious. I want to see uh, something up on cool. heaven, maybe even down in the lower part of said area. And I do appreciate they're watching the flanks this time. Uh, just, like, look, look who's on the move. There's, there's a little little sneaky guy. Uh, killer, or not killer cook, excuse me. Done. That's afloat, working their way through the spawns. 30 seconds left. Now Central Cabarrus pushing in. The Silver Dart will be able to find two, Ooh. but Swampster able to find up the kill instead. Finding two, get better kid as well. Finding Kacho on that backside. 3v3 now. Swampster still down this health. He's able to find one, possibly more. Swampster. That's going to be four. A possible ace now. Tartic is the only one left remaining. Swampster clearing house down from hell. A great hold from Weddington. I'm not supposed to be biased as a caster, but. Any good KJ play makes me so dang happy. And Swampster is delivering it at the highest levels. An ace for the Sentinel players. 12 and 1 out of the KD. Almost as many eliminations as the entire rest of their team combined. And this is how devastating Killjoy can be on any sort of defensive push. And Weddington have spent their entire strategy trying to figure out how to break through it and genuinely bend. I think something big that could help them here is more mid presence instead of laser focusing on just a main point of a or b taking over this middle area moving around the kj utility it gives them so much more room to work yeah and we see way. swampster the knives coming out now from get better kid needs to try to find these kills the drone as well will spot the push onto this b main area <laughs> neon now trying to get aggressive the spray through market won't find the kill. Tacho able to find the one on two. Mazakin there. Now Swampster firing back. Get better kid goes down. The defender, Killjoy as well, able to find one detainment. Does already go down now. It's just Tartagalicious on the rotation with the Cypher. Spooks, the only one left standing. Wicked able to find the kill onto Tartagalicious on the rotation. Uh -oh. Spooks opting to chow. Will lose out on it. Weddington with another great defensive round. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack from that round specifically. That was expensive, at least in terms of ultimates. That was both the Blade Storm committed, as well as our, our little electric tickle fingers, as we like to call them. <laughs> tickle fingers? <laughs> the tickle fingers. Uh, so Flip Knox, they pulled that in. So those are your main damage dealing ultimates, right? You're going in. One way to shut that down, you put a lockdown on the floor. That's all yeah. it took. I mean, like, so the Swampster's like, all right, you want to rush us in? Work with that. Move through my lockdown. I, <laughs> it's such a terrible thing to look at as an attacker, but essential cameras, they'd already committed. Like, there wasn't an out. They had to try to fight on through it, and it, it, you're just having the lockdown zoning out. You're in this constant yep. state of panic, seeing the timer tick down below you to your inevitable doom. Like, yeah, it's, it's tough. It, it, it's yeah. tough. It, it's tough to say the least. Like, Weddington have had it locked down, no pun intended, on this defense, <laughs> specifically because Swampster's ability to navigate the killjoy, to incorporate the rest of these flashes, these smokes, into what the defensive setup, that plan is, knowing that Central Cabarrus love to push down one of these main chokes. Yeah, timeout coming through from Cabarrus here. Trying to 
regain some bearings, right? They're down 5-1 early on this attacking side here. Round seven to come. Weddington in complete control so far of this map number one here. Of, of this best of one. Yeah. So this is, unfortunately, the only map the you map. get to see. <laughs> the map. Indeed, Tacho getting aggressive, trying to find Tacho. this kill on to Flip. Trying to get these pre-fires, oh. will be able to do so. Flip just trying to get that angle, unable to do so. The heal now as Hunter's well. Fury? Sounds crazy. But he's actually doing damage with it! No way! That catches Spooks and even does another set of chip damage! What? How did he know they were there? That's just sheer intuition out of the Silver player. Do you expect it? If Tacho's gonna pick up the Sofa, surely you do right things! It almost didn't matter, but the rest of the team can clutch it on up. Wow, Tacho making full use of Sova's suppressible abilities on the map such as Ascent. And the full buys still in full swing for Weddington right now. We have three Vandals, two Phantoms, full armor buys, but on the side of Central Cabarrus, they're unable to do so, right? We see two Phantoms of two Vandals, but still a Spectre on the later half on Mazakine yeah. there on that Sage. Right now, Weddington's defense is just completely blowing Central Cabarrus out of the water. Now, look at the aggression coming wow. through from Weddington there, pushing through this mid angle. A close, the only one here to try to okay. defend this A site. We'll be able to find one. Tardy is able to find the response onto a float relic as well. But now, get better, kid. Has to try to find this response onto Wicked. Tacho able to find two on the backside. Wicked with the knives. Tacho finds three, finishing off Tartagalicious with the pistol. A very aggressive and successful round coming through from Weddington. I'm sorry, that was a full round? That flew right by. Yeah. <laughs> that was fast. And Weddington are almost playing the defense like attack. They're not giving space. They're like, all right, if you want to move on to site, you are going to have to literally move straight through us, right? Yeah. If, if you're going to try to use any form of utility, it's the KO knife, followed by two flashes, Central. then the ultimate, then the blade storm, and all shoved down one choke that Essential Cabras didn't have anything else to do but kind of just turn their heads around to like on a swivel, like, what in the world is going on here? And like, they're doing it again. Swampster, of all players, the Killjoy, is pushing up so aggressively. It doesn't matter if you have the swiper or not, just crash like grabs another triple kill. I mean, I, they were just 16 and two at the end of that last round. Now they're 19 and two. Swampster is playing absolutely unbelievably out of their mind right now. Get better kid with the Odin, trying to find the kill on Tacho, unable to do so oh. just yet. Will find one. Now the spray through yeah. gets wicked, but Swampster Jesus. getting four in that round. This Swampster just cannot Here. be stopped right now. No. Such cavers just need to get off attack. They really, they, yeah. this is not, this is unfortunate. We, we do have a little bit of a pause coming through, which I guess can serve as like a little bit of a, it's a breather, it's a reset, but both mentally and within the game probably, given yeah. that it is a tech pause. The KJ's need to stop. That is, that yeah. <laughs> that is the most important thing right now. Yeah. If you're going to continue to let Swampster go on this absolute rampage of a defense, this is a problem. I mean, mm -hmm. Kill Killjoys should not be pushing up through a mid spot where you know players are on attack. That also says something about Weddington's own confidence right now. They're like, right. okay, if we're winning these gun duels and we don't even give Cabras a chance to use their up abilities like they're automatically more favored in the fight the defense know exactly what they're supposed to do where the attackers sit back waiting for that plan to come out before they counteract to it yeah and looking on the side of cabarus right talk delicious is not having the performance that they had earlier on in the day right now still looking very strong but if talk to delicious can come online on this later half of these rounds this could be a completely different map right because right now it's the name of the game is find Swampster, get Killjoy out of the way. Because right it. now Swampster is just tearing through them right now. 20 and 2 on Shush. this Killjoy. Coming back now from the tech pause there. Possibly a, a little bit of just a disconnection there. Able to find that reconnect coming through, which is nice on the side. Yay, Valorant. Yeah. Yay, Valorant. Yeah, exactly. The server is coming back Four online. Sports. Get better, kid now. Opting to use the knives here in this <gasps> round. They're anticipating Josby. them getting aggressive. <gasps> I love Josby. this. Well, look, what, what won't be able to find the kill is get better kid. Tardigalicious able to respond, but 
What a flick coming through from Josby, able to get the knives out of the way early. I wish you guys could have saw my face in that pick. <laughs> like, my mouth was open. Like, what in the world was that, Joseph B? If you're going to get one of those eliminations, by far the most valuable one, get better, kid, is resurrected, though. So, okay. We're back into this. Everything's all right. And it's one of the benefits that Sage can have, despite her low... And low low quality of utility, you right. could say. And the resurrection is very helpful. And now you have an ultimate again. <laughs> so yeah, you better kids. Nice. All right. We can run it back for round two. It's kind of like a Phoenix ultimate and a jet ultimate combined. Yeah. Get better kid now. Has a Vandal as Here. well after Josby does go down in that early exchange, if you will. 30 seconds left 30 remaining seconds now left. on the attacking side, but Wicked with the Sheriff on this flank, waiting patiently for Tacho to find this angle to recognize that the push is coming over towards A. The information dart will come through. We'll find two members spraying through the smoke now. Is Tacho not able to find an angle just yet? Shock darts left and right. Finding some chip damage. Wicked on the backside, finding the kill onto Flip. Mazakine able to find the response. Now, all up in heaven, okay. Pacho and Swampster trying to find these angles, dropping down, looking through Ooh. hell, but Tardigalicious mm. and Get Better could find the angles of Float Relic, the last one standing on the side of Weddington. Central Cavarus looking good here, coming off of that slight tech pause coming through. Has the operator up and available, will try to peek that angle, but Get Better Kid there, ready to respond. Another round win over to Central Cavarus. Yeah. Central Cavarus needed that tempo. Perhaps the text reset did work out um, in their <laughs> favor exactly as they needed it to do so. The resurrection on the Get Better Kid was the turning point in that round. Yeah. I was getting worried after that timer ticked down. I'm like, all right, they haven't really made their move yet, so you got to be getting antsy. Something has to start moving right now. Most importantly, though, they didn't pick the site that Swampster was set up. So that, yeah. that's very helpful in the long run of things and allowed that push to continue a lot further. Weddington, you just set Swampster up on B site by themselves and knowing that Central Cab want absolutely nothing to do with any of those little explosion robot buddies, even though they're adorable, they are deadly. You go towards A, you look at the mid direction, which I do appreciate that Central Cabarists are starting to explore at least slightly more of, but for now, they're th just biding their time in spawn. A super slow play style, which, as I mentioned, while this can be helpful, it also allows Weddington to just completely wrap around behind them. A float Relic now trying to get some of their utility out. Does get Flash okay. Wicked able to find one on to flip. Tardigalicious finding the other one there on to the KO on Weddington. Wicked now trying to get back out of that icy floor beneath them. Get Better Kid finding I a response exactly onto Josebi as well. 4v3 situation in favor of Central Cavarus. The rotation now coming over to this A site. Tacho, Tacho, excuse me, left. trying to find this angle. Looping around towards this mid area. Won't be able to catch them on that rotation. Full A control now for Central Cavarus. Weddington, I think that's the advantage of them playing slow and forcing, or excuse me, for Central Cabras to play slow, Weddington to force themselves out of position. You don't know where they are, though, and that's that's why I, I get scared in this situation. It is a trade on the board, but I don't think they have any idea where Wicked's posted up. I mean, there's nobody looking in that direction, and the Swamps are there. It, the lockdown, great spot. It secures an automatic win. There's no choice but for the players to push straight into the crosshairs of the defense. Swampster can bide their pretty time. Oh, I'm sorry, Tart Delicious. This is not going to end well for you at all. They have the ultimate to regen, but yeah, the, there's no escaping. The clutches of Swampster. Ninth round now. One. At least, excuse me, wait, the spike didn't have time on it. I don't have any audio, so I couldn't hear it. But the visual, the ultimate, Last the distraction. The but enough time for Central Cabarrus to get their third. And that's actually massive, considering the lockdown was invested. Yeah, I, I didn't recognize that that bomb was close to uh -uh. blowing up either, right? We saw the ult get popped from Tarticalicious, that is what bought them the time. That distraction coming through meant that Swampster could not look for a stick 
on to that spike and had to search for that kill instead. However, Swampster 23 and 3 right now on this Killjoy. 8 to 3, the score line here in favor of Weddington. Central Cavers, however, two round wins in a row. Getting some economy back in their favor, trying to even up the gun loadouts across the two teams. The hard part of having an economy now, though, is it is the last round before we swap sides. Yeah. So at, at least you get a full full stacked round, right? To, to close yourselves off. It would be great for Central Kyberis to grab a fourth Ugh. here. But oh, get better, kid. Behind a box. And Tacho can shoot straight through that one and has the lineups for shock darts on days. Weddington, though, are just, they're, they're playing patient. They're starting to be like, all right, Central Cabarrus really like to play their sweet and dear time and then make a scrambled rush at the end. And they're just holding the spawn. They know that Weddington gets antsy, that they get aggressive and are attempting to force mistakes out of the defense, which while it isn't a bad strategy, you still have to plant the spike at some point to extend your round even further. And this, this is getting red, 100% red, wicked is ready for the push to come through. You had to left. have heard Flipnock's little little speed boots along the trail, the crosshair placement a little bit too far out. That's a second for Wicked, make it a third. They're all just walking straight into his crosshairs, finishing with a fourth and four HP to spare. Yeah, peaking one at a time. Central Cabarrus drops one at a time, switching over to that pistol to finish off that last kill onto Spooks, but Wicked, was just in the perfect position and just read that play so beautifully coming through there that they just sat, waited patiently, knowing that this rotation to A is coming through. Now the swap over to the attacking side. Weddington up 9-3, to three, four rounds away from winning this best of one and now advancing then to 1-1 one and one on the season. Mm -hmm. That's really all it takes. And if Wedding, really whoever wins this, this pistol round is highly favored to win the next one after. So yeah. this is this is where it's got to start. You're on an even foot. Your utility is different. Your weapons are the same. The Sage Wall only costs some bullets out of the side of Weddington. They're going to make their speedy approach. Uh-oh, Mezikin gets spotted out. Does she know it, though? They're hesitant to push through the smoke. And Tartagalicious adds two in the response. At least for the cost of a Sage. Weddington, though, now that they're down and beaten, do they move on forward? No, Swampster works around the back. There was no coverage in the middle part of the lane. And they just take the eliminations for free. Rotation underway. And all it takes is Central Cabarrus, two players, and Swampster knows exactly where Spooks is located. Yeah, Swampster checking Ooh, the angle, able to get the ticks, wow. the picks there for Swampster. Three kills in this opening round. Get Better Kid, the only one left standing. Has to pass through Swampster. The plant as well coming through now. Swampster picking up four in Sheesh. the pistol round there for Weddington. Three rounds away now, 10-3. Looking super strong moving into this attacking side. I was about to go on a rant to say like, KJ's just not as good on the attack. Like it helps cover flanks, but Swampster just did what a duelist normally does. Yeah. And, yep. and just kind of ran it down mid, and 10 eliminations separate him and Wicked right now. Ridiculous, mm. considering the performances they've been putting up. You're at a 9 KD. That's, that's your KD ratio. Oh, like, that's right so good. It's I mean, Swampster is playing out of their mind right now. Flip Knox now <laughs> trying to find these angles, oh. but Tacho able to find. The kill through the wall there with the Sheriff. Get Better Kid now trying to hold this angle onto a float relic. The knife comes out. Will get that suppression onto this jet. Dash is unusable when you are suppressed because that will just prevent you from using any of your abilities. The suppress now wearing off a float relic. Trying to get aggressive here. Trying to find these angles. But you can see Ooh, one pickup already. Get Better Kid able to find that kill with the Sheriff. Possibly a second, One not quite remaining. just yet. Josebi, Swampster, and Tacho able to find kills wow. on that aggressive push through market there. Now 11-3, to three, two rounds away is Weddington. Yeah. Uh, again, we said it. Whoever won that pistol round likely coming away with round number 14. So 15. This is for Central Cabris. All right. 
we should be able to at least get some decent weapons on their side. Is it fully rifles? Absolutely not, but it's better than any other situation. Going up on match point here, it's likely unwinnable in, in that case. So if we're seeing Central Cabris locking it down on the defense, I like more mid control, but are they prepared for this, this speed that's going through? They scan flip knocks. It's not like your sighting place is a secret. All oh, the info gathering from Weddington's composition is just too dang good for Central Cabris to attempt to sneak up at Wicked and Scepter, Swampster with one apiece, and they're not stopping. Product Delicious has to come up huge right here. here for Central Cabris right. if oh, they are looking to win this map. Sandwich, like you said, the knife, the knife coming okay. through. Wicked trying to get aggressive will go down. Three kills over to the Clove. 2v2 situation now. Josby, a float relic over towards this B site. But crucially, Cabarrus has possession of the spike. Never mind, it was planted. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> The audio cues, man. The They're audio not cues. There. I know. I, you're so used to getting the audio cue, but we're, we're playing on a muted Valor, which is very hard. Don't standing. do that. And also what's hard is fighting into Tarticalicious. You said that she had to step up here, and it's exactly what happened. Weddington straight up did not respect her power, and um, guess what? You get smacked in the face My with thanks. it, and as, the, as they should be. Uh, this Clove player has been it's the like shining it. point that Central Cabarrus has been rallying behind for mm -hmm. their entire Time. They've been playing Valorant within the Vessel League. And if they're going to come back from a deficit as great as this is, it's going to be, be because of Tardalicious's great leadership. Yeah, timeout now coming through on the side of Central Cabarrus, trying to determine what they want to do for this setup to avoid a map point situation here. That last round was a crucial win for Cabarrus. If they lose that round, they most likely lose this yep. series, this best of one, not going their way right now. But like you said, Tardigalicious, 17 and 15 right now on the scoreboard. Positive all around for Tardigalicious on this clove. Trying to bring Cabarrus back to the light. Trying to keep them alive in this best of yeah. one where Weddington so far, Swampster specifically, has just been unstoppable. Yeah. It's so hard with how Weddington are playing right now. Take a look here on, on their next attack. You'll, you'll kind of see those patterns start to reemerge where as compared to Central Cabris, who kind of all stacked together in one angle. Weddington, you're going to have a couple on B, a some going over mid, occasionally somebody that's on A. Like, they're using their players, their bodies, to take more ground, cover more distance, and prevent any sort of sneak attacks or open up further possibilities for rotations later down the line should that be needed, right? And when you have that much space, that much knowledge at your, at your possession and the potential for lurk kills. Weddington have put themselves in a favorable position, not to mention the lockdown online. A common strategy here. The only thing it doesn't clear is very back sight. The smoke will keep it covered, and the rest of Central Cabris not allowing themselves to get stuck up in this ultimate, denying any sort of utility, that resource that you wanted. The spike is down, but Gift Player Pig Kid has the elimination. Central Cabras are hitting the shots that are so necessary to this game. They need to spot out Joseph B, which they don't seem to have a lockdown on just yet. Only the Omen player stands tall and not for much longer. He shall go down, and Central Cabras ain't out of this one just yet. Yeah, the defuse coming through now from Get Better Kid. Two points away from Wonderful. that ultimate crucially winning this round with four players left standing I mean these rifles get to stay in their possession the economy looking heavily in favor right now of Cabris full buys unavailable for the side of Weddington Tardigalicious as well 18 and 15 finding one crucial kill in that exchange in that push from Weddington Get Better Kid and Spooks as well, coming alive for the side of Cabarrus. Oh, Better Kid almost had the angle lined up to Sage Wall. Just attempting to put a, put a halt to this fast push that Weddington typically like to make. You know what I see though? Look who's moving their way through lane, through rafters, and nobody has a sight line on tree. It's our good friend Swampster. 
it's only a matter of time. Turtle just does have the angle down on Locke. Will fall, second chance. They managed to win this out, though. The Swampster knows there's no reason to really stick around. Ops to go the other direction, knowing that if Tartagalicious just lives for this long, it wouldn't have mattered. Get the damage assist. Tartagalicious did over 50 damage to the Killjoy player and will regain their life force. So yes, Weddington are now up or excuse me, they're down in terms of the players that they have alive and all it takes Central Cabarrus have looked so much better in these past three rounds yeah. alone, Ben, because of the initiative that they've been taking. Yeah, Tartar Galicious here staying alive is crucial for Cabarrus. Tacho able to find one, Spooks unable to find the kill, Wicked able to find the headshot instead. Tartar Galicious now on this rotation, 3v4 situation, the Float Relic finding this plant now. Get Better Kid finds one onto Josby. 3v3 now. Get Better Kid approaching through market. Finds one. Tacho finds two in response. Get Better Kid has to come up huge if they want to stay alive and have a chance moving into match point. A float Relic will find the kill with the Spectre. Match point now for Weddington. Weddington, one match more point. round needed to come away with the victory, and they're going to do it with all the guns ablazing, and by guns specifically, I mean the big ones, uh, to go ahead and pull out. Whereas we look on the other end of this, the riches are going to be enough to pull them through, at least partially, for another attempt. Flawless gameplay is what Central Cabras need to have from here on out. I've liked the changes that they've made, denying a lot of these fast pushes, either through the Sage Wall, some Cypher Strips, or just straight up pushing forwards against the attackers and not allowing them to walk through the space uncontested. But Joseph B, oh, I mean, you know exactly where Flip Knox is. All it takes is a couple Dying. bullets to the dome. Tacho following up with another one. Weddington, they know they're close to the win. Central Cabras, despite how much better uh, they have looked, it's not looking to be enough here. Get better, kid. Blade Storm up and running, but no targets available to actually do the needed damage. And a 5v2, this jet has to come up with a massive elimination. Tacho, that's gonna be one. A second for Gator, a third! There's almost there, but in order for the entire clutch to come through, it has to be an ace, and you're already on the wrong site. Still has the blades available here, but like you said, it has to be an ace, and you have to re-enter this site. A float relic still alive for Weddington as well as Jet on the other side here. Approaching now, Wicked still alive. The Flash will come through oh. the smoke as well. It's not looking good right now for Get Better Kids. Oh. Just will enter the site instead. Now has his pins. If they swing together, it's gonna be so hard for Get Better Kid to find these kills. Looks oh, away just so at close. the wrong Attackers second. Win. A float relic able to find that kill, and that will be Weddington with the victory. Weddington coming away with their first win in the Vessel High School Esports League. And I got to say, I, I noticed the improvements from last week. And a lot of what we saw, like the struggles specifically for them, were kind of the picks that they were making. Like in terms of the actual agent compositions, they get a more conventional map, such as Ascent. You know exactly what the meta is, and you <laughs> play it to perfection with the information that you have gathered, and you're not afraid, right? You're like, okay, they might have big scary weapons, but so do we. We can hit the shots, and we think we can do it better. And that mentality alone is enough to push your entire opponent's back, right? Mm -hmm. With this level of just aggression, like no fear at all. While it can be dangerous in the correct amounts as displayed by Weddington, it's what can push you over the edge against teams such as Central Cerberus. And player of the series, right, of this best <laughs> of one, has to go to Swampster. Uh, yeah. I believe that's 30 and 6. Something like I think. that. Something yeah. along those lines in one map it's is crazy. unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, performance there. Swamps are able to just lock down sites on defense and then on offense just going crazy, finding huge kills and huge picks on the side of Weddington and just able to push them over that last hump. They will advance to one and one on the season. I'm very, very excited now oh, to yeah. see what happens with this squad. I don't know. This this is a this is a team that has already from week one to week two. If you've grown this much, yeah. like what else can you do from here? Was it flawless? Absolutely not. But 
the fact that you can you can improve. You often there's, there's this saying that goes around: you learn more from losing than you do winning. Yep. It's not exactly that, but it's something along those lines, mm-hmm. right? And when like you're taking what you went wrong in your losses and applying them forwards to your victories, I want that mentality to stay the same, even if you do end up winning the day. Yeah, uh, very exciting to see what happens. Central Cabarrus as well, not a bad showing whatsoever. Just Swamps are just firing on all cylinders, yeah, right? They're just you can't stop that guy. Cabarrus with some substitutes trying to find out what works so far, but Tartagalicious is the constant that we've seen right today mm-hmm. on the in these two matches playing very extremely well on this clove, able to find these angles, find these crucial pickups uh, against Weddington uh, and I believe against uh, Central Tech as well earlier today. So very excited to see where they go with their game plan and what happens moving forward. 0-2 start on the season, not something that you'd want to see, but not inter- insurmountable by any means. Yeah. Uh, we're uh, the season's relatively short, right? Four to five weeks is all yeah. the games that you're going to be playing. So the more experience that these teams can continue to build up in, the better. These state finals again, forty-five thousand dollars on the line for Valorant competition. If you can come away on top of that state championship, an insane amount of money for them, especially as as high school students. It's it's this extra extra bit of motivation, right? Yeah, I'd it's, say it's, so. You'd yeah. say you'd, yeah, I'd, I'd agree. So. I'd agree. Yeah. But uh, like also the skills that you're building up along the way are. It, it, incredible to have like yeah. especially later on in life when you're going out to get your career and whatever else you may do from then on out which is why i'm so glad that wednesdays are only the start of our esports weeks here at vessel yeah. we still have thursday for super smash bros and friday for rocket league it will be us along with our good friend igloo covering the metrolina conferences from here on out so make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the vessel youtube channel to stay updated on all of your future high schoolers streams that's going to do it all for us today on Valorant. We'll catch you tomorrow on Super Smash Bros.